Hello, welcome to the Stream of Chaos. This is Chaosium's home for live played games by Chaosium and Friends of Chaosium. My name is James and I am here because I am the keeper of a new Call of Cthulhu game which will be taking place on the Stream of Chaos. But before we jump into that, myself and all the other players uh, for this campaign are from Melbourne, Australia, and we'd like to pay respect to the traditional owners of the land, the Wurundjeri peoples of the Kulin Nation, and pay respect to their elders, past, present, and emerging. So the game we're going to be playing is Shadows Over Stillwater, which is a fantastic campaign for the down darker trail setting of Call of Cthulhu, that is the Wild West. So eldritch abominations and gunslingers, it's a match made in heaven. Now, I'll let the whole cast introduce themselves in just a second. We've done a session zero, uh, so we're all in the same groove. We're all ready to get started, and we'll catch you up on why everybody is here and what's happening. So without further ado, now that you're all here, let's jump on in. First of all, Art, do you want to introduce yourself and your character? Hey, I'm Art. Uh, I will be playing Dr. Joseph Waite, uh, who is a talented, if socially awkward, physician. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Art. Uh, Daniel, what about yourself? Uh, hey, everyone. I'm Daniel, and I'll be playing uh, Griff Gutherson. And uh, Griff is like a, an old aging mountain man who his best years are behind him, and he don't much like to talk to people around. Anyway, we'll see how it goes. Excellent. Thank you, Daniel. Next along, David, what about you? G'day, I'm David, and I'm playing Grace. I'm a 17-year-old child, read man with a gun, <laughs> and I've got more days ahead of me than Griff's got behind him. Hey. <laughs> An unfortunate... Well, you know, let's see. Uh, things can tend to go wrong in these kinds of situations. I don't see how situations. that's unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, Jackson. Hey, I'm Jackson. I'm playing uh, Marshall Jeremiah Mac McDonald. He doesn't mind Mac. He's a grizzled old kind of been around the block too many times U.S. Marshal. He just wants to get the job done so he can crawl into his grave. Brilliant. And Rachel. Hi, my name is Rachel and I am playing Ada Blanca Ward. She is a bit of a tough woman. She is a reformed outlaw, although she's not really going around telling people that. She has her own ulterior motives she has her own agenda she has people back home as they say but most importantly she has a 16 gorge i don't remember what it is she has a really big shotgun <laughs> hell of a thing <laughs> to carry her. around important <laughs> too out in the wild west so let's give you all a little bit of context and then let's jump right in now all of these characters this strange crew of folks have come together to hunt down the green-eyed gang now the green-eyed gang are a gang of outlaws that each of our cast members has a personal vendetta against or at least one of them now the crew have gotten together in El Paso, at least recently, because Hank Hanaretti, one of the members of the Green Eyed Gang, has been spotted nearby in a town called Stillwater, which can be traveled to from El Paso without any difficulty. So the collection of you all got together. You met with a marshal there called Ted Whitman, who sent you on your way towards Stillwater, where presumably you'll be able to get in contact with the local sheriff and find out exactly where Hank Hanaratty is and bring some kind of vengeance and justice to this man. Now, let me ask, which of you doesn't like Hank Hanaratty in particular? Oh, it me. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's me. Do you want to what elaborate want to a little more? What did Hank Hanaratty do to slight you in particular? Hank Hanaratty uh, strung up my deputy. He uh, shot him dead in the back, uh, slit his throat, and strung him up on the water tower. And uh, yeah, never forget my deputy Bill Howard. Okay, so you are on this journey in part to get revenge from Bill for Bill Howard. And hopefully Hank Hanaratty will be able to point the rest of you at other members of the Green Eyed Gang so you can all extract your own personal kinds of vengeance, which I'm sure we'll get to in later sessions. Now, we're going to start you, you off promise, as... right? <laughs> Pardon me? You promise. We're definitely I... going to get to my one, right? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. That's the most important, of course. No. Um, now, we're going to start off with a collection of 
horses, riders, and in some unfortunate cases, walkers that yeah. are heading along across the desert plains towards Stillwater. It's hot. The sun is beating down. You can practically hear that call of a bird far in the distance and then the slide of a very familiar guitar note. This is the Wild West. And we're happy to be here. Now, the collection of figures that are moving across the plain are, of course, yourselves, the gathering uh, of characters that are going to be hunting down the Green-Eyed Gang. One by one, can I get you all to describe your characters? Give us a, a, to tell us what they look like. How are they going? How are they traveling? What's the story here? Who wants to start? Me first. Uh, oh, okay, go ahead. All right. So uh, I am a kid. I'm like 17. I've got longer hair that's pushed back and a face stained with dirt and freckles. I don't have a horse because the sheriff is too, oh, sorry, the marshal is too stingy to buy us any. Um, so I'm running between the other, uh, rest of the posse, I suppose, seeing if I can hitch a ride on the back of any of theirs. Okay, fantastic. Now, there's one more thing that we have to add about your character, Grease, and that is that you had a couple of strange dreams during our ses session zero, and you've been feeling a little bit distracted as a result, haven't you? Uh, no, nothing that I care to expand upon. I feel fine and okay. definitely don't see strange things at sleep. Okay, good to know. All right, who wants to go next? Uh, I'm having to step up because... Uh... Grease over there has been real hassling me to get up on my horse. But my horse, whose name is Horse, uh, only takes one person. And that's Griff Gutherson. Ain't no reason to take another, you know? And uh, Griff is this big, bearded, sort of classic mountain man. Like It looks like a bear perched up upon a horse's back as he fuffers through. Although in the, tex in the, in the Texan, New Mexican heat... He has probably stripped off a few of his big fur layers that he is used to wearing and is uh, probably, yeah. yeah. You're traveling lighter than you have in a long time. You're used to those clothes staying on. Yeah. Fantastic. Who's next? Uh, I'll go. Please. Um, so uh, Joseph is a kind of slender, unassuming kind of fella in his mid-30s. Uh, he's on a back of a pony. <laughs> it's a simple horse that gets him where he needs to be. Um, one noticeable thing about him is he don't carry a side iron. He goes around unarmed, but he does have a large medical bag uh, that goes everywhere with him. Otherwise, he's dressed in a standard, if a little dusty, three-piece suit uh, and has you know, blankets on the back of the horse, but doesn't look like he spends a lot of time sleeping rugged. All right, brilliant. Thank you very much. Mac, Blanca, which one of you wants to jump in next? I'll go next. Please. So, Blanca, I cannot remember if we agreed if my horse was purchased or stolen. <laughs> I have a <laughs> suspicion. <remained> distinct. <laughs> I remember it came up, but I think, you know what? It's in the past. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah, the real recent I... past. <laughs> Someone purchased it. Someone stole it. Let's leave yes. it at that. No <laughs> names need be. It's no paper trail that we don't need to talk about the order. Anyway, yes, I am a tupper horse. So Blanca is um, her most defining feature would probably be her very messy strawberry blonde hair. Um, and the aforementioned, I believe it was 16 gauge shotgun. Yes. Um, that is definitely stolen because uh, it has lovely gold detailing and she refers to it as Mother Mary. Oh, brilliant. Um, her clothes yeah. are like a mishmash of sort of cheap basics and real like glamour pieces. Again, potentially stolen. It's kind of a running theme with her. <laughs> she is normally at the back of the party. Uh, she doesn't like having people traveling behind her and she likes to keep an eye on things. So that's where she's she is at the moment. Okay, perfect. Mac. Mac is an older gentleman of about 50 years. Um, he, he took pride in his appearance once when he started out as a marshal, but then he realized that everyone, you know, most everyone he meets in this line of work ends up either dead or in jail. So nowadays his uh, coat is dusty, his uh, shirt is creased, his tie is just pinned to his collar to save him untying it. Um, and he gets, he gets to where he wants to go at his own pace, as indicated right now. Uh, he and Greaser ride to El Paso on the tra on train. 
uh, without horses and he wasn't able to rent a horse to get from uh, El Paso to uh, uh, Stillwater. To Stillwater, of course, it's in the name. <laughs> um, so he is uh, setting the pace of the group despite the fact that the majority of people have horses. He, he sets the pace by striding uh, confidently along Oh my yeah, god. We'll, we'll get where we get there. We'll get <laughs> there when we get there. Okay, so the collection of you are traveling along. The heat is kind of getting really persistent and, and you're you're sweating, you're moving through, but you're making good time. You've turned off towards Stillwater and you know that this journey shouldn't take any more than a couple of hours. But as you're looking into the distance, desperately trying to peek through the haze of heat ahead of you to catch some kind of glimpse of this town or some other feature that will give away your final destination, and all you can see is hills for the minute you start to notice something a little odd. It almost seems as if the horizon is swaying just a little bit. And all too late, you realize that there is an earthquake happening. Now, this is not the first time there has been an earthquake on this trip. You've had one during your session zero experience, but in the last couple of hours that you've been walking, not one, not two, three earthquakes have struck. Not enough to really freak anybody out or send people flying or damage everything but they are constant they are there and they are unmistakable can i get everybody to roll a dex check just humor me here we want to make sure that nobody is going to stumble and break their horse's leg and end the campaign early in what world do three rapid fire earthquakes not freak someone out well freaked i mean earthquakes can happen rapid fire like this this is you know this is not unheard of these kind of things can happen but it definitely is unusual let's leave it at that okay uh, had a couple of rolls everybody is full success from everybody no blanka yes, you, you i'm not gonna lock it down i want to see what happens okay sure thing nothing too embarrassing <laughs> you, you you have to kind of rear rear your horse back and you look a little bit concerned by this whole thing but the rest of you kind of still yourselves and wait while the world shakes around you and after a couple of seconds the ground returns to normal and you're left once again in the calm flat desert do any of you make a comment after this earthquake yeah hey you mountain know? man you want to explain why the ground's shaking so much uh i don't think it's uh i don't know if that's normal for this type of place uh i don't spend most of my time up around here all right, uh, Jamie. Sometimes it happens. Ground Are shakes, we? water, rivers flood. And That's a, that is a terrible <laughs> insight, Rachel. You were saying. Are we? I sorry if I missed it. Are we anywhere specific in the United States, or are we? Yes, in you. So you, you le after leaving El Paso, you've traveled across Texas and you're heading towards Stillwater in New Mexico. So you're getting closer and closer. You're now in in the New Mexico heat, a proper, and uh, you'll be near the town of Stillwater before too long. Now, I, Daniel, the player. Yes. Do not think earthquakes are very common in New Mexico. However, I was I could going be to wrong. say, but I have no idea. <laughs> they are they are pretty common in California, which is I mean like they happen in Melbourne. So. <laughs> California is on the right continent. How hard can yeah. this be? It's the same landmass. Yeah, can same tectonic plate, mate. It is the same planet. <laughs> yeah. You, want to you, guys, natural you, guys, you guys done with that? You had, a, you had your fun there? <laughs> 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 you know, I guess. Um, sure. can I look at it? Can I natural roll? world, please, Griff. Give yeah, me a natural thank you. world. Appreciate that. <laughs> let me, let me, let me decide if how much I do know about this in a in a quick little roll there. What I get? Nice okay, one. look. I don't know. I don't know shit. You, <laughs> you're frustrated. You're not really familiar with this land, and uh, you really, could, you really, you really wouldn't be sure. I mean. Technically, it's possible. Look, everything's possible. And in this day and age, this wonderful era where everything seems bizarre and you're exploring this uh, strange place that you personally have never been to before, it seems natural that maybe all these earthquakes could be occurring. Uh, who really knows? Anyway, you put it out of your mind for the time being as a collection of you continue over uh, towards Stillwater. Now, once you start getting a little closer to the town, you are trudging through these small valleys that emerge from these little hills that pop up everywhere. You're avoiding small bits of scrubland. You're trying your best to keep cool in the heat. I'm going to need somebody to make a navigation check just to lead the party correctly towards still water. And I'm also going to need someone in the party to make a survival check. Now, Doc, since you are here and you are 
if, if not familiar with survivalism, at least familiar how to, with how to keep people hydrated, you can choose to make a medicine check if you'd like to use, if, you, if it's, no one wants to make a survival check. I'll make a medicine check if no one else wants to take up I the can, panel. I can have my, a go at survival. I was going to say, my survival's okay, but it's, I don't think it's anywhere near as good as your medicine. You oh, may as well yeah, do any of this. Yeah, um, and and I think uh, I think uh, the person who knows the lay of the land the best would be the marshal, right? I believe I'm the navigator. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. Make those checks. Okay, my there it is. All right, how are you doing? hard Let's success. Hard right. success. Okay, yeah. fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you a... say you're good at this. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it was a. Uh... I mean, I'm, I can push it. <laughs> uh, no, no, that's, I think that yeah, you'd be hasty. You know, look, you're pretty sure that you could pro pro provide some kind of strange tincture which would fortify the spirit and make people not have to worry about dehydration for a long time, or it could keel them over exhausted right where they stand. And solve but, the problem for forever. Fortunately, with this hard success, you're able to figure out, uh, based on an old faded map, Mac, that you have in possession, and some careful scouting of local landmarks, that you're hardly more than an hour and a half from Stillwater. So there's probably no need to take the nuclear option just yet. You begin to head off into the hills and are scraping through those areas, climbing up, stepping over sharp rocks, and beginning to make your way closer to the town of Proper. As you start to head through this area, can I get somebody to make a spot hidden check? I guess I'm I'm leading, so I might be so bold. Please do. I will. Can I also do that from the back of the party? Absolutely, you can make a spot hidden check as well. I'm gonna I'm gonna say that Greece is really annoying <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I don't you're know gonna I... say what? <laughs> hey, fat ass, give me a turn on your horse. <laughs> it's right. your own horse. So I'm seeing some fantastic failures here. I'm seeing a regular failure from Mac, and I'm seeing a critical a nice failure. Uh, oh, I got sand in my eyes. Blank. I was <laughs> what happens? Worse than that, I'm afraid. So yeah, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> is that a fumble? Is that it what is, critical failure? Yeah, is? that's a fumble. A critical failure to me is like a hundred. Well, oh. uh, you've actually got 52 in the skill, yeah. I can see here. And with a 97, that means you're not going to critically fail. You're just going to have a regular failure. So close oh, okay. <laughs> You almost went plummeting. And we'll talk exactly why in a second. So the collection of you are moving through. You actually start to see a faint blur of still water in the distance. You can see this town itself. But alongside all these hills and the blur in the distance of still water, you start to notice the occasional shack popping up. And you also no start to notice the occasional signs of package. There is a little uh, section of uh, rock that has footprints in it. You actually spot an abandoned broken tool off to one side. It seems that people move through these hills relatively frequently. What you don't know is that these hills are actually the sites of a great deal of mining activity. And had you fumbled, Blanca, you would have gone plummeting straight down into a mine. As it is, you manage to pull your horse suddenly just sharp as you see a large pit dug straight into the ground and the collection of you manage to get around it. You're making so much noise that after a couple of seconds, you hear kind of, what, what the hell's going on up there? And somebody comes up and pokes their head out of the mine. Seeing the collection of you, they look a little nervous. It's a younger man, perhaps late 20s, early 30s, with thinning, very, very pale blonde hair. He kind of jerks his head around as he looks at a lot of you and says, oh, you're you're not here to rob me, are you? No, just passing by. Okay. Well, that hesitation wasn't at all reassuring, but I can see you've got a marshal's badge on you. Uh, sorry, let me just... He climbs all the way out of the mine and gets up, brushes down dusty clothes and sticks out a very dirty hand for you to shake. Uh, says, uh, uh, my name's Frank. Uh, uh, for Frank Hood. Now, and nice to meet each one of you. Y'all heading down to Stillwater, unless I'm mistaken? Yeah, that's right. Anything we need, anything we need to be worried about between here and there? Worried about? Oh, no, it's just you can see it right there in the distance. Nice and easy. I mean, y'all probably want to be a bit careful riding around like this. These hills, they got plenty of mines in them, and you, you want to avoid barreling down into them at full speed. There's all kinds of prospectors working in this area, uh, including myself. Uh, well, welcome to my claim, uh, except don't be staying too long as much. 
Uh, what exactly are y'all coming to Stillwater for? You got you you working, Marshall, or yeah, we got some business to attend to. Oh, business, right? Well, well, you, you care to share? Maybe I can tell you if I've seen any any criminals or outlaws around. He starts to look quite excited. He's like, "This is a conversation." He no notices you um, starting to smile, Grace, and gives you like a brief nod. Yeah, I, I can help. I've, I've been around here. I'll keep an eye out. Of course, I don't make it into town too often. Uh, but anyway, uh, go who, on, who Marshall. You for? Let him know. Well, as long as you're not gonna head back to town and tattle on us. Oh no, my, my lips are sealed. Real honest. I swear to God. Keeping an eye out for Hang Hen Ready and the Green Eyed Gang. Uh, he pauses for a second and nods knowingly. I don't know who they are. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, 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 I'd help you if I could. I swear, I swear to God. And he points to the cross that you wear around your neck, uh, Blanca, as he says, swear to God. But, um, uh, you know, I, I, I wouldn't know Hank Hanneray, but I'll tell you what, uh, you'll be able to find someone, I'm sure. You head to either of the saloons in town and they'll be able to point you right. Let me get a psychology read on that, if I may. Sure, go ahead. You can have a psychology test. Extreme success. Extreme success. Okay, fantastic. Powerful this guy move. is just. Hey, crazy. is Hank Han ready? It's <laughs> okay. Wow. And, uh, and we win well Call done. of Cthulhu. Exactly. No. Unfortunately, this man is not Hank Hanarati. This uh -huh. is absolutely uh, just an excited prospector uh, who seems very, very pleased to have someone to talk to. In fact, with an extreme success, I'll give you a little bit of more information. You can see that he has a small bag off to the side of the mine. It doesn't look like it's filled with very much ore. He also looks perhaps not as ragged and tired as he should if he was toiling all day down in the mines. And you can see he's playing mm. with one hand uh, uh, with a small arrowhead. You think that he's probably sort of been drifting around through his claim, looking for cool stuff. And he's probably not going to be staying out here for too long because he realized it's hard work and go back to wherever he came from. But he seems to be having a good time prospecting for now. You were the most exciting thing that's happened to him all week. I'm afraid I don't know Hank Hanarati, but like I said, the two saloons in town, they'll be able to point you right. Um, you know, it'll be good to see some uh, some law around here, frankly, because, um, well, it's uh, not my place to say. A anyway, best best of luck to you. Well, no, right. when you're talking to a U.S. Marshal, it is your place to say if there's been criminals and folks hard up around here. He looks a little scared all of a sudden. Can you make me an intimidate check, please? I can. Oh with boy. a bonus die, thanks to my pulp talent. Have we talked about pulp Cthulhu yet? Oh, we, we haven't mentioned pulp Cthulhu in detail, but Ooh. let's let's bring that up right now. So we're playing pulp Cthulhu, and in pulp Cthulhu, you have pulp talents, which allow you to have a little bit of an extra edge against this savage and terrible world. And what does your pulp talent do, man? My pulp talent is uh, being scary. Um, which means, uh, well, it's, it's up to you. At the Creeper's discretion, we can either reduce the difficulty level or I can get a bonus die on my Intimidate rolls because I'm a scary dude. Take a bonus die. That, I think that works fine. Thank you very much. We're using roll 20, of course, where the uh, built-in Cthulhu integration makes it so easy to roll bonus dice. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, so with a success, immediately. Uh, oh, that's a critical nice. failure there. So lucky. <laughs> good, thing <you> had... <laughs> good thing you had the bonus wow. die. Wow. Thanks, Pulp Cthulhu. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you managed to sort of uh, lean in and in intimidate this guy a little bit, just standing still and presenting a stern face towards him. And he shrinks back and says, oh, no, no, sorry, I didn't mean nothing. But he drops his arrowhead, he bends down, picks it up again. Uh, listen, I, I, I just, all I was saying, and I didn't mean to be rude, it, it's just that, you know, uh, it, it's not so much that we, we got, a, we got a, a great band of criminals around here. We just, so we don't have, we don't have no no law, you know. Uh, the deputy uh, left off a while ago, and uh, and he did most of the work. Sheriff, uh, well, uh, the points. Uh, do you have your flask visible, Doc? Uh, I probably it'd be like on my side or or somewhere. Uh, I wouldn't have it in my hand. I had while we were walking, but not All right. right now. Fantastic. So in so you don't have it in your hand, but it's still visible to your side. And Frank is going to point to the flask and says, "Well, the sheriff, the sheriff drinks." Uh, I don't, I don't drink. Oh, you don't? Oh, sorry. I thought that flask. You, usually, folks, folks, they keep liquor in those. Doctor White's an honest man. 
Oh, I, 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 I wasn't making no dispersions. Uh, you know, I, I, uh, please, please forgive me. Do, do, oh, doctor. Uh, yeah, I, I'm a doctor, a and sometimes a dentist, and well, occasionally a veterinarian. His eyes kind of go wide, and he, he looks like he's biding his time to say something. And he finally, he starts to go in and says, "You couldn't look at my foot, could you?" <laughs> and he starts to bend down and undo his uh, boot. Now, uh, yeah, I'll, yeah, the I'll rest hop off of my, <laughs> I'll hop over my horse and be like, "Oh yeah, yeah, of course, I'll get my medical bag out." Okay, fantastic. Oh. <laughs> Make a medicine check for me, but this basically ends the discussion that you while, have with Frank. Uh, while he's about, just see here, it just just seems like my my you know my bunions are giving me out. <laughs> Great um, right. success. You're, you're able to treat whatever ailment he has from walking throughout the hills for a great deal of time, and the collection of you can head on to Stillwater unless there's anything you, else you want to ask Frank before you head yeah. off. Grab the name of the sheriff. Name of the sheriff? Sure. Uh, that 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 man here. Uh, uh, he's named Sheriff Harlem. Sheriff Harlem. Sheriff Harlem. Why Harlem? Harlem. Harlem. I'd like to spell it to you, but I can't because <laughs> on account it, of not being able to read. Is uh, it N is, N for Nelly or M for Mel Melly? Oh, for Nelly. Uh, Harlan. H A R L A N. Sheriff okay. Harlan. Now, uh, this fine gentleman doesn't know, but uh, just for ease of access here. Oh, he okay. <laughs> Tim Harlan. Is the, okay. is the sheriff of this town. And this is possibly something that you would have heard, Mac. You could have uh, been told by Ted uh, Whitman to try and find Sheriff Harlan. Can I talk to Did the you uh, miner for a second, Jim? Absolutely. Yep. If I, While he's in a vulnerable position with his feet in the doctor's hands, I want to crouch down yep. next to him. I want to say, hey, Mr. Uh, Hood, you're an educated sort, at least in minings and things. Is that right? Oh, oh, I mean, I, I, I like to think I am. I know a little bit about mines. Y'all don't I, need to be humble with me. I don't stand. I don't. I don't understand a thing about rocks or something. What I want to know is, if I were to drill a series of holes or something in soap and such, it crumbles. With you and all these other folks around here prospecting and stuff, does that cause the ground to rumble? You've been noticing the rumbling too? Look, normally it don't. Uh, I, I think this. You know what? I'll be honest with you. I, I've only been out here for about a year. So maybe it's just the season, uh, but uh, look, um, the, the rumbling being unusual, I guess it could be a result of so many people digging. Now, uh, Griff, you would be thinking, no, it's not a result of that. The, the, the amount of digging uh, that would cause earth shakes, you'd have to have huge machines of colossal size, perhaps use a process somewhat like drilling down and using small explosions to <laughs> fire out a lot. Anyway. Uh, this, sound, this is, sounds preposterous. There's no way that's impossible. possible. No, kind of strange that, technology that wouldn't could work. possibly do that. You, no, what you'd need to do is you'd need to drill a whole bunch of clean water into those holes yeah yeah yes <laughs> exactly it becomes completely unusable after that <laughs> y'all making jokes i'm too dumb to understand or what uh, um i'm just gonna turn around and be like uh hey grease yeah. um you're making him wriggle and i'm trying to work man sorry doc i'm real ticklish i apologize doctor <laughs> it's all right grease grease yeah. it's, it's good thinking grease you might be onto something there you should keep looking into that and Look into it over here while we like, go into town. Like, wow, they're sure <laughs> drilling the devil out of it. Just, yeah. Ah, ah. yeah. <laughs> All right, fantastic. So the collection of you, now having spoken with Frank a little bit, he le waves you off saying, if y'all ever need anything, just come back. My shack's down that way. And he points towards a sort of section of hills that form a nice shady valley. And the correct, correct collection of you head on further into the town itself and take your first real steps into Stillwater. Stillwater's a nice town. It's a little small, it's uh, got, but it's busy. People are wandering about, everyone seems to be nodding and smiling. There's an odd smell in the air, something just a little strange to place. Um, Mac, do you want to make up a smell? The, the, what's a smell that's hard to place, hard to describe, and seems somewhat out of the ordinary for a town? Ooh, in the middle of lavender. Year? Make it lavender. <laughs> um, let's go that's... rosemary. That's lavender adjacent. Okay. Yeah, I'll take it. I'll yeah, that's folks, a uh, <laughs> folks are roasting up some ro roast. Okay. Oh, so lamb. Uh, It'll be lamb. Roast it's lamb? Uh, oh, well, 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 we burn also, to the ground. It's also for remembrance. Is it? Oh, really? Ooh. yeah, we, we did that on purpose. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, of course we did. Very, yeah, very and I'm just also kidding. lamb. <laughs> <laughs> I see. 
Now, you don't smell any cooking meat, but you have this sort of distinct smell of rosemary, maybe, in, in the back of the back of your nose as you walk through and begin to stroll into the town of Proper. It's clean, it's relatively well maintained, although you do see that it looks like people are pretty busy here. Occasionally you see sets of boots set outside doors that haven't been taken in, or um, piles of tools outside that haven't quite been cleaned of the dirt yet. You pass by a number of buildings as you stroll towards the centre of the town where you'll have a proper chance to look around. Um, there's a livery, a place that rents out horses, uh, you know, a blacksmith off to one side where a large bearded man is sitting by uh, you know, the entrance and nods at you as you go past. There's a couple of saloons, there's an undertaker's office, a general store. You can see a schoolhouse in a hill on the distance, and right next to that, a small church. Uh, you can even, to one side, see what looks like a very large laundry, um, and you can smell freshly clean linen sheets from inside. As you walk through, you eventually come to stop before before a large saloon, one that looks like it's the, in the dead center of the town, and it says up the top, Sweetwater Saloon. You pause for a second. You look back to the front of the town where it says Stillwater, uh, back at the sign where it says Sweetwater, back to the two, and yeah, it's the Sweetwater Saloon. It just happens to be in the town of Stillwater. Where would you like to go? What would you like to do? You can see a sheriff's office off to one side, or at least a building that on looks, you know, immediately identifiable based on the posters around the outside, and the uh, symbols hanging down from the roof as a sheriff's office. The town is yours. People Marshall. are nodding as you go past, but no one's starting a conversation. Ma uh, Marshall, uh, look, I, I don't mean to, I don't mean to tell you how to suck eggs, but this is your show. But uh, um, uh, now that we're in town, I think uh, splitting up might not be a bad idea. We we can cover more ground and see if we can get this guy out from out from out from under it. Well, first of all, I'd like to secure some rooms for the night. Uh, ain't no need. Well, if I know outlaws, the saloon is usually where they stake out. Now, uh, you you did pass by multiple saloons. Uh, um, uh, Blanca, you might be the most knowledgeable about saloon life, given your history as a potential outlaw. Can I get you to make an education check for me? Sure. Um, don't you mean my my history as a as a widely traveled? <laughs> oh, absolutely. No, <laughs> yes, but yeah, noble, kind, not uh, at all suspicious. I can luck things down. I'm gonna use one luck, and it'll be a hard success. Um, yeah. Can I? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, I'll tell you what. Save your luck. Uh, okay. Hard success isn't going to give you anything uh, more here. Uh, this is this is the the difficulty of this is not particularly hard. But you know, I'm being kind to you now by saving that one point of luck. I'm not going to be killed back. You know, having a later on in that in this campaign, you'll be three weeks later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. From a Damn it, rope. Jamie. <laughs> um, so the sweet water. Um, uh, saloon, which you can see in front of you, looks like the kind of place where you would go to get drunk. You can imagine sitting in the corner and being pretty undisturbed. But when you were walking by the outskirts of the town, you saw another place, a place called the Buena Suerte Cantina. And when you looked at it, just something about the 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 set of the building, the dim light from inside, and is it that faint smell of too much liquor, as if something was used to clean blood off the top of a counter? You know mm. that that's not the place you'd go to drink. That's the place you'd go to get work. So right. Okay. Balloons. Do you have a preference, Mac? Where are you thinking of uh, of uh, setting up inside the the haven of scum and villainy, or inside the place with an incorrect name? Uh, let me. I think let's get a room at the place where you don't get stabbed. Okay, sure. Sweetwater Saloon it is. Max steps forward and heads into the saloon itself. Is anybody not following and heading somewhere else? No, I'll follow. Way okay. to take charge, Mac. Uh, I don't oh, yeah. think... I actually don't... Uh, I'll, 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 I'll wait until last. If everyone else goes in, then I'll follow. All right, you, um, you're waiting until last, and as you're kind of um, standing outside, you realize that a, um, a, a young woman, probably in her mid-30s, has just stopped and um, is looking at the collection of you and meets your gaze and just nods, staring at you. Ma'am? Can, oh, can, can we help you? Uh, so you you stop as well and turn. The rest of them have, have all head inside. I'll, I'll I'll walk up to the I'll walk up to this lady. <laughs> okay, so the two of you are going to walk up to the lady while the rest of the three of you head inside. We'll jump to what happens inside first. 
all right? So you walk into the Sweetwater Saloon. It's quite nice. It's relatively busy. There's a couple of people sitting around. One or two of them are nursing drinks. There's uh, some music playing in the corner and you can see um, a young woman who is tickling away on the ivories playing some kind of jaunty music. This looks like a pretty happy establishment, although the music isn't fantastic. There's the occasional missed note and it makes everything sort of jar forward and throws you out of whatever conversation you're having. Behind the bar is a young man with uh, dark brown hair and he nods as you approach and says, hello, are you here for a drink? You to secure rooms, first of all. Rooms. What do you got? Sure, we, we, we got rooms. How, how many do you need? Uh, I suppose three should do us. Three rooms should do? Okay, fantastic. That's, uh... That's, uh... Let me... Uh, give me a second, and he walks sort of down the side of the bar, steps into like a small room at the back, and you hear some mumbled um, uh, conversation. Um, then he comes back and he says, um, oh, that's going to be a, a, a dollar for each room for each night. The fact that he went away and came back indicates to me that that's an extraordinary amount. <laughs> Not knowing, is it? No, that is, oh, that, okay. is that is relatively reasonable. I mean, it's, well, it's, it's dear, but it's not... It's not outrageous. This is a nicer uh, establishment and you're in the middle of nowhere. These places tend to charge relatively high because they only charge infrequently. Well, that's fine. All right. I'll and pay it and down. how many how many rooms do you want? Uh, three rooms. Three rooms. Yeah. That'll now remember be, uh, in Call of Cthulhu, you can spend your spending level for whatever you want exactly. throughout the day. Yeah, absolutely. So you, this isn't too bad. Struggling. Um, what's um, your Oh, sorry, I totally interrupted you there. I was going to say, if he's struggling, if he's like, three rooms, I'm just going to lean forward and be like, that's $3 total. Okay, $3. Thank, thank you. Sorry. Three rooms, $3. That's that's $3. Okay. 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 My spending he, level is $5. Right. He opens Whoa, a small cash register expander. and pulls out $3 and slides it across the table and nods at you, smiling. Well, no, I'll... I'll pay you the, the, the three dollars. Oh, of course. Sorry. Oh, uh, I, I think I'm a little distracted. Sorry. No, that's the cash that. register. Uh, it was a level operator thing and, and holds out his hand for the money. Yes. Can I make a psychology check? Uh, you absolutely can make a psychology check. Please go right ahead. Thank you. Why? Mac, me, meanwhile, you uh, hand over the money. And he, he says, okay, um, sure. Ro rooms are upstairs. Uh, go, go, go right ahead. We'll need our keys. Oh, <laughs> no, uh, sorry. Uh, they're not locked. Yeah, anyone in particular? They're all free. Oh, uh, I guess just knock first, and if someone hollers at you, then uh, leave them alone. Amazing. Fine. All right, you turn back and uh, head away. Meanwhile, lingering at the, at the uh, bar a bit, leaning forward, Joseph, you're trying to eye this kid and figure out, is there something wrong here and you're able to tell yeah this kid seems really out of it not you know that you'd say they were you'd say you say he was drunk but um he he doesn't seem to be ha have any difficulty moving he's just kind of spaced out a little bit so i, I don't know if it counts in because technically it happened during our session zero but i believe i noticed that greece was distracted you did. And as you kind of think that, you turn towards Greece a little bit, who, as we established, has been behaving in a little bit of a distracted way, and you make a link. Yeah. Yeah, Greece is behaving in a similar way to this kid, but Greece's distraction is very minor, whereas this kid seems to be, you know, it's it's hard to have a conversation with him. <clears throat> I'm just going to like lean over the bar and be like, uh, hey, kid, what did you say your name was? Oh, my, my, my name? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, my name is He Doesn't Pause. I pause. <laughs> consult my notes. Sorry. <laughs> it's quite all right. Um, he said, uh, uh, my name is Jason, J J Jason Brand. Jason Brand. Uh, all yeah. right. Um, have you been sleeping well lately? Sleeping well? Yeah, I, I think so. I think I've been sleeping fine. What, no, why? No, like, dreams or anything like that? Dreams? Oh, none that I can remember. All right. I'm throw my pencil. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, um, 
you know, you seem you seem a little distracted. Maybe just make sure you get enough rest, all right? Okay, well, you will do. Uh, do I have to go now? No, when you feel tired or when you can't concentrate properly, then you should probably go have a lie down. Don't want to hurt yourself. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you very much. It's quite Did you a want to drink or? Uh... Uh, no, I, I, I don't drink. Okay. All right. Or, or a room or? Can I, like, is there anything else I can do without literally getting up in this kid's face? Like, is medicine appropriate from an appraisal perspective? Um, look, uh, you, you, you'd have to, at, the, at this stage, you've kind of exhausted the ability to just talk to this person. You'd have to sort of get relatively close and be like, hey, you okay? Can I, can I actually check your pupils or something like that? Um, but yeah, this is definitely, the, the, the kid appears to have forgotten completely that he just had the three of you book a room. Meanwhile, outside, we'll jump away for just a second. Um, the, uh, you two get over to this uh, woman who is standing there and she's nodding and as you approach, she nods at you, Griff, and says, hello. You're looking at me? Oh, was I? I'm sorry, I didn't realize. You, you, you just looked uh, interesting. Haven't, haven't seen you two around the town before, you know what I'm saying? No, we're we're new. Yeah, oh, that's great. That's great. That's great. Uh, this town get many new people. Oh, you know, every now and again, some folks wander through. Um, you know, we had a. Uh, well, you know, people from the area, prospectors, they come down every now and again. But properly new, we get them relatively frequently. You know, about six months ago, we got a new one. Points towards the laundry, and about a year and a half before that, that's when the undertaker came points towards the uh, yeah. Undertaker's building. Nods. Yeah, yeah, pretty frequent. Uh, Blanca, you remember the name of that guy we're looking for? Uh, I completely forgot his name. Hmm. Hank Hanaretti. The Hank Hanaretti. burned into okay. each of your minds. Oh, okay. I was going to say, I was going to say, it's not my fight. I was going <laughs> <laughs> hey, to no say dude. Bill. Hey, yeah. Uh, you, you know a dude called uh, Hank Hanaretti? Hank Hanaretti. Can't say I'm familiar with the name, but you, you should ask around in one of the saloons. I'm sure they'll be able to direct you correctly. Right. Can you tell me which one of these saloons gets the most traffic? I noticed the one back there seems a little rough, but are there any others? Oh, no, there's the over there and over there. There's the two of them. The Sweetwater Saloon, that's, uh, that's just a nice one. And, uh, well, if you're feeling risky, you can head down to uh, the Buena Suerte Cantina. But I can't recommend it. It's a little bit of a rougher crowd. I'm just curious if you can answer my question. Why is it called the Sweetwater Saloon? I thought this town was Stillwater. Oh yeah, that that's on account of the owner, uh, 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 Samuel Phyllis. He 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 didn't like the name Stillwater. He was there when the town got founded. Wanted to call it Sweetwater, but they outvoted him. So he called the saloon the Sweetwater Saloon in an act of protest. Hmm. Hmm. And, uh, sorry, you, you said a few folks around here who relatively new to town, that being the, that being the, the laundryer at the, uh, Undertaker? Yeah, yeah, the, the, the laundry started up only about, about half a year ago, and the Undertaker maybe, maybe two years. All right. Thank, thanks for your help. Not a problem. Yeah. And she stands there and makes no move to leave. She's, she's just standing she's there? She's just standing there. <laughs> she's... The two awkwardly you, walk away from her. Back. I, I just, but I back away from her, never like, like I back away from her. Like, not, yeah. Not and looking away from her. Like, brilliant, she brilliant. Eye contact the whole time. And she is too, but she's not doing this strange predatory gaze. What she's just hell? completely nodding. And oh, two oh, of you... well, we'll see you around. Uh, what, what was your name? We, we didn't introduce ourselves. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. How, <laughs> how, how rude of me. Um, uh, my name's Donna. Oh, see you around, Donna, and I'm gonna follow Griff. And hey, hey, Blanca, um, I don't, I don't talk to many people. Is that how people are nowadays? Are they just like that? Uh, no, I, I, I also don't really talk to many people. But she seems a little otherwise unoccupied. Yeah, we should. Uh... Just keep we an eye out. Our backs around here. I think. <laughs> These people don't sit right. Let's go see if the others inside have encountered anyone similarly strange. 
Okay, mm. the two of you get together and you rejoin your companions inside uh, the Sweetwater Saloon. You can see Mac and Grease are heading upstairs and Doc is leaning over the bar a little bit, kind of examining this bewildered looking young kid who just uh, stares straight ahead, a little confused. Um, uh, uh, upstairs, Mac, uh, Grease, the two of you find rooms and indeed they're unlocked. Um, one of them doesn't look like it's been cleaned. The bed is unmade, but you know, it is clean as such, just not ruined. And you, know, you straighten out the blanket. And it seems fine to go. Hey, Mac, you ain't gonna make me share with Griff, are you? Well, I guess it's Griff or me. Well, why Griff can't I have my own room? You got three and there's five of us. Yeah, I figured Griff would uh, sleep outside. You know, you take ain't wrong. up too much space. So now there's 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 three rooms between four of us, so it's all the more likely that I'll be having my own bed. Well, afraid not. After the incident the other night, I think you could uh, use some hard sleeping. <laughs> that was... I thought we'd been over that. I thought we'd, we'd set things straight and such. I thought you came out on that on my side. Well, I'm not convinced that... Uh, your trigger finger is, isn't too itchy. Well, what do you want me to do? Leave my rifle and serve my pistol with you for a few days? I mean, I, I'll prove myself if I gotta, but I ain't gonna shoot anyone unless they got it coming. All right, and I hope you sleep well on that. Mm. I'm going down. I'm gonna get a drink. Okay, fantastic. So. The collection of you all make your way inside the saloon and you set up uh, those of you who are having your own rooms, uh, get into them. Uh, what's the division here? Uh, Griff, are you happy to sleep outside? I prefer it. Okay. Do you go and check with anyone first or do you just assume you'll pitch a camp a few miles from the uh, uh, from the, from, from, hmm. from the town? Well, I got to check. It's, it's land. I set up a tent on land. Nobody okay. owns the land. So you're not sleeping in like the 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 barn of the saloon or anything like that. You're heading you're heading out. Um. Yeah. I'll try to get as like. I don't want to go like super far away. Like yeah. I'm just on the edge of town. Sure. I, like I'm not like miles away. No. 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 Sure. That that that's fine. Just clarify. enough that I can sit under the stars. Sure. And who? So who's bunking together? There's going to be two private rooms and two people sharing. Well, there's any discussion i'd suggest that you know uh miss ada is is given a room to her own uh, it's just right and proper i am not fussed but if no one else is taking i'll have a private room okay fantastic That's only right. so that means that two of the three of you are going to be sharing who's it going to be come on come on <laughs> dr and mac Come on, Marshall. <laughs> Grace Maybe needs a bed tonight. Draw straws. <laughs> like I don't a, think, can we I roll gambling? <laughs> I've got a it's gambling like I said, skill. Grease, Grease doesn't take up that much space. But he don't take up much space in your room, right, Marshall? Doesn't bother me. All right. Well, it looks Unbelievable. like unbelievable. <laughs> the collection of you uh, set up your affairs and uh, after having um, you, you know, Griff, you find an area, you basically just sort of lean out the window and go, there uh, is where you're going to... Uh, <laughs> I'll be over there. You'll, you'll see me. Yeah. Um, but it's not super late at this stage. It's probably about mid-afternoon, so you've got a couple of hours left. Um, uh, Grease, you said... Uh, so you can... you can. Some of you sit down. Some of you look towards the bar. Grease, you were saying you were going to get a drink? Yeah, 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 yeah. I want to go up and I want to set a couple coins on the bar. I want to say, gentlemen, I'm here hunting banditos and beverages, and I don't see any banditos. Oh. <laughs> well, I haven't seen any either. So you want you want beverages, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm after milk if you got it fresh, but I'll settle for something sour. Uh, milk. I I I think we've got some milk. Um. Uh. G give me a second. I'll just. He turns to walk uh, out towards the back, and as he's going, uh, all of a sudden everything starts shaking again, and all of you grab onto uh, the stuff around you. It's a little a little more severe this time. A couple of chairs fall over, and behind the bar, about five or six bottles of liquor just fall down and smash to the ground, and no one really <laughs> seems to react. A couple of people go like, oh. Ugh. And uh, the, uh, the the fellow keeps walking and walks out, leaving a trail of licory footprints as he goes. Eventually, he comes out um, 
uh, from the from the the, the back of the uh, saloon, and he's carrying with him um, a small bottle of milk, which visibly has chunks in it and is old. And he Gross. goes back, brings out a glass, and he puts it down on the table, uh, and he pours it, splashing these great heavy chunks down into it, and says, uh, "Fresh from this morning." <laughs> And no, across. that's disgusting. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't worry. I'll, 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 I'll refund your money. And he hasn't picked up your coins, but he goes back no, to the I don't, hey. register and starts taking out money from it to give back to you. What the devil are you doing? I want fresh milk. What's well, oh, unclear? Well, I, I think that's the freshest we've got. I like, look, I got. No, it's got chunks floating in it. This has been out for three, four days. Well, well, you, well, you, well, well, you, you're, you're welcome to, to, to come with me and, and see our, see our supplies your, your, yourself. I don't want to milk your cattle. I just want something to drink. Well, c- can I get you some liquor? No, I'm. I'll keep my money. And I fold it back, and then I leave, and I'm trying to think of a pun with milkshake as I go. <laughs> okay. And I'll fair enough. Circle back around. Now, well, because the earthquake. The, the, That's the yeah, I, I got. It's it. clever. It's fine. <laughs> It, it is. Yeah. The rest of you observing this interaction can see that the, uh, the, the man behind the counter, Jason, sort of puts the milk down um, under, the, under the counter itself and then stands, makes no move to clean up the spilt liquor on the ground. And as he walks, you actually hear a crunch of broken glass underneath his foot, um, underneath his boots. And he, he appears not to notice. And no one else in the, in the saloon really makes moves to either. You also begin to notice that none of them are drinking or eating. They're all just sitting there. Some of them are nursing drinks. But they're not doing anything. I ain't been around people very long, but this place seems a mite weird. No rough looking folks in here? Not many rough looking folks, but as you start to look around and look towards everybody else, and this is each other included, I'd like you all to make a power test. Okay. No. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Ooh. Bye, Doc. Yeah. Oh, Doc's dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Oh, I am also not doing great. <laughs> neither. I grab. Neither is Blanca. <laughs> Bye, Blanca. Uh, yeah. Can can I push it? Okay. Fantastic. So, um. First of all, let us let let okay, give me two seconds because I'm going to have a look. With, so so first of all, we've had successes from Greece and from Mac, uh, and failures from everybody else. All right, now your failure isn't a critical failure because you have above fifty in the skill, um, Doc. So you're okay. Now neither critical failures from the other two of you. Now, so what 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 we're gonna what we're gonna what we're gonna do here is that you've started to feel quite headachey, and 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 a little tense, and you can either just kind of grin and bear it i.e. not push the role and suffer the effects or you can do that thing where you're like come on get the i wish this was out of my head yeah I gotta get rid of it. and actually start of trying to trying to shake yourself clean of this distraction of focus if you push it you might end up having a nosebleed or something like that or something worse yeah it's up to the three of you would you like to oh push I, i'll role? take it i take it i i take it it's, okay. i think i would push it you're gonna oh, push no. it yeah Okay. So better off it with. Fantastic. Famous last words. Um, is this? Because I've or- <laughs> oh, no. I've already violently been. You Ill. have. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. You had some kind of exposure to this effect previously, and you had a really good success. Have a bonus die. Make that power check again. Seven. Seven. I don't think that helps. Seventy-seven. Yet. Seventy-seven. Seventy-seven. Okay. So, unfortunately, even with your preparation, it seems like whatever reaction you are having is worse here. You can lock that down, or you can push it. Bearing I'm in mind that if you push it, you will still maintain the bonus die. I'm gonna push it with bonus. That's... Okay. Go ahead. And Blanca, you're pushing as well. All right. So. I failed. <laughs> that is the push. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Oh, you failed? Oh, brilliant. Okay, not so good. All right, to start off, please, um, Griff, would you please roll me a, a D6? Yep. All right. Now, uh, oh, wait, hold, wait, hold. I'm going to 
Did that work? No. All right. I'm rolling a physical one. <laughs> <laughs> I like physical dice. That's just a guy I am. I rolled a six. Okay. I'm going to assume that's okay. good. Uh, it's not fantastic. So we'll come back to you in a second. Um, the other two of you. So you have rolled and you have failed, um, Blanca. So actually, your your headache is is getting really, really bad and you're refusing to yield to it. Can you roll a d4 for me? And it is slash roll. Space. Yes. Fantastic. Well, roll Whatever. slash. Yeah. Two cool. for me. It's almost always slash roll. I don't know why I went the other way. <laughs> Keeping it okay. loose. So, um, uh, you, so what did you got? A two. Okay, fantastic. So, um, uh, and and finally, you've succeeded, uh, Doc. So you actually are, are going okay. And as you look around, you see two sets of symptoms. First of all, um, everybody in the town seems to be just completely zonked, completely relaxed. They're not really doing much. And Griff seems to be kind of the same way. Griff is looking relatively calm, seems a little less tense. Griff, remove 15 points from your int, power, and education. Excuse me? I'm yeah. Sorry, what? You can remove 15 points from your intelligence, power, and education. Each one is reduced by 15. Now, this is temporary, uh -huh. maybe. But you are currently acting with right. significantly reduced uh, awareness. Is it um, that you got a hard success? Sorry. Uh, Gr uh, Grease. No, I, I didn't. Griff, I didn't Griff. succeed. Oh, Griff. Griff. No, I'm Fair. smart as hell. Don't put Griff. this on Fair. me. Sorry, Griffin. Grease are gonna confuse the shit out of me. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now, on the other side of things. Sorry. Sorry. I lose fifteen int ed and. Yes. And and power. Nothing? And, and power. power? Yep. Right. And uh, meanwhile, Blanca, you have been trying to fight against this thing. With a roll of two, when you look towards Blanca, you see she's holding and she's rubbing her eye again and again as if she has some kind of headache. And eventually when she takes her hand away, you see that she's ruptured a collection of blood vessels in her eye and her eye has turned bright red across the whole thing. And there's actually slight gouge marks from her nail. So you're going to take two points of damage, uh, Blanca. Uh, I'm, a, I'm gonna black. Okay. Yep. Fantastic. That's real bad. I'm gonna, yep, this is happening. Oh, okay. You take a swig from your flask, and meanwhile, now that you all realize that something is deeply, deeply wrong in this town, I'd like you all to make a sanity check. Everyone? Everybody. Is oh, my, is my sanity for me. affected by my power? Or no, not currently. Aw, oh, man. One off. Oh, failures for everybody. All of you can Bump. roll for me a, a, a d4 and you will lose that much sanity. Midge, I'm a what about me? Can I spend yes. one point of luck? Absolutely, you can. I succeeded. Um, I just have what to beat 15. Oh my, how am I not getting this? That's you, you, that's right. You just, you, you just have to beat it. For the uninitiated, because I have not played a lot of Call of Cthulhu, and the only Please. time I have played it was a drive it like you stole it, go insane, kill everything. Yes. <laughs> How bad is going insane? Going insane? Failing a sanity check individually, not very, very bad. You know, you can fail checks and you can lose sanity all the time. It is expected that you will lose several sanity, uh, usually in small bursts throughout a session. Now, if you lose a large chunk in a single go, i.e. you lose more than a fifth of your sanity in a, in a, in a day or more than a uh, sorry, more than a fifth of your sanity in a single hit or a tenth of your sanity in a day, I believe. If someone wants to double check that for me, because I, I thought it was a fifth a in fifth. a, uh, sorry, fifth. five points in a single hit is temporary. Five points in a insanity. hit or a fifth over the course of the day. That's right. Thank That's you very it. much. Five points in a single hit or a fifth over a single day, then you are provoking a, a temporary uh, burst of insanity uh, or an indefinite burst of insanity if it's over a day value, and that is far more serious. So if you are in danger of that, then I would pull out all the stops to stop that because you don't want to or immediately go somewhere. insane. But if you're just taking a couple of points of sanity loss, it's fine. Uh, excuse me while I work out what a fifth of my sanity is. Yeah. No worries. Uh, you probably shouldn't be getting too close to it, I don't think. Uh, you should be relatively yeah. safe. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do the D4, like... Okay. You know. That. Hey, Grease. Those yeah. of us who succeeded, are we all good? Yes, once you've once you've reconciled, you are all good. I you get some... to do so. Yeah. 
you get some milk? I, I, I could use some milk. Yeah, I tried. The gentleman at the bar is an idiot. Okay. Yeah, I, I asked for it, and he tried to give me something rotten. Hey, Doc, how are you feeling? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, a 100 critical failure. Our rolls have just been fantastic. So is that your sanity check? Uh, no, I did my sanity. I tried to edit my sanity. Oh, fa- it's not a rule. Okay, I was going to say, it's because you, 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 if, you, if, you, if you fumble a sanity check, fun things happen. No, no, that was, that was an accidental, hey, I'll double click that. Nope. <laughs> yeah. No problem. My sanity was uh, 65 over 59. So I still failed, but yeah, three points. Sure, easy. Okay, so the collection of you are now standing about. You're 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 still you're still present. You're dazed, Griff, but you're not you're not totally out of it. What would you like to do? What is next? You, you feel like and and also the scent of rosemary, which ironically is for memory, is getting more and more stronger inside your nose. It's beginning to burn in your nostrils a little bit. There's something odd going on here, and you will need to try and figure out something before you end up just drifting aimlessly like everybody else here. I want to go to the laundry. Well, good, I think, for one. I think we should just stick together for now, Griff. Is that all right with you? I guess. Why do you want to go right. to the laundry? I can't remember. Well, that ain't real but, helpful uh, now, is it? There was a lady that said it was new. She said it was. it, it was... It had... Uh, a year and a half ago. All right. Well, I suppose and, that's something. And the grave digger. I want to go to the grave digger. Man, shouldn't we be discussing that this place is giving me the heebies? I mean, look at all these it's, folks. They're just swanning around doing not much anything. Yeah, it's someone burning something that's making this smell. How many... Uh, play a question. Um, how many of the party are displaying a fair so far the only person displaying a significant effect in line with what you've seen in the town is griff but you can see that blanca is visibly struggling and continues to need uh, at her damaged eye she seems to be having some kind of like more uh tactile reaction to the whole thing and greece is still a little out of it or is he good now greece is still a little out of it but but nowhere near the same level you know greek greece seems like occasionally blinks once or twice too many times Let, let's just step outside for some fresh air i'm i'm going to pull up the bandana that we was given and maybe put a little water or something on it so i can breathe through it i ain't fun okay. rosemary not anymore All right. at least fantastic fair enough same thing i'm pretty sure we still got those bandanas that, uh... okay so two of you mask up uh Sounds the rest of you to me as well Okay, three of you mask up. In fact, I believe that you all have some fancy bandanas that you uh, rescued during your session zero. So you pull your bandanas up and tie them around your face. Uh, Griff's is sitting there looking relatively out of the whole thing. Does someone want to put a bandana around his face? Okay, so you come As forward. doctor, I'll do the thing. Um, oh. you, excellent. You turn back and you... You apply the bandana and then the collection of you step outside back onto the streets of Stillwater where you can now see once again everybody walking around except now it looks a little different. The busyness on the streets seems to be a little more like people wandering just a little aimlessly, not really sure where they're going. And all the boots and tools left inside don't tell you of a busy town anymore. They tell you of things that have been forgotten. In fact, as you look back towards the blacksmith, the rather large man with a big beard, he seems to be picking up tools and kind of looking at them as if he doesn't really know what he's meant to be doing with them and kind of picking them up and, and walking about. Uh, you, can, you can see the smoke from a forge coming out uh, at the rear of the house and he just sort of walks around a circle and he puts the tool down and sits back down and, and has a real big think for a while. I don't know if either of these are relevant, but I have both pharmacy and biology as things I know about. I don't know yeah. if either of those would help me put a, a pin on what this smell is. Make a pharmacy check. Right. Not awful at it, but we'll see. Hey, hey. Hard success. Not bad. Keep- Good at my job. <laughs> Upon pulling up the mask, you definitely feel 
that uh, there's some kind of filter effect that's come into play. And after a couple of minutes of breathing through the mask, you feel uh, your head begin to more distinctively clear. And you think, okay, okay, there is definitely something in the air here. There is something in the air that is causing this behavior. What kind of substance could cause this behavior, this, this bizarre specific behavior? You have no idea. But there is something in the air in this town. Is it love? Well... well that music. can also be there. I mean, if there's one thing that I find fascinating, it is any kind of medical mystery. So, I'm going to go find out what it is. Damn it. Okay, fantastic. You can also see a doctor's office towards one side, by the way. Um, uh, doc, if you want to have a look, and that's going to be great, having two people to refer to as Doc. <laughs> I mean, I refer to myself as Dr. Wade or Joseph. It's just everyone else calls me Doc for... Reasons Obvious I can't. Reasons. Well, that's because doctors are so few and far between. It's usually they're, not a problem. They're always called Doc. It's the old West. <laughs> I think, I'm pretty sure a few of them were called Doc and weren't doctors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, there were a few. Um, I, I'm going to go have a look at the doctor's office, absolutely, if there's one around. Sure. All right. So, Joseph, you're heading to the doctor's office. Griff, you said you were going to go to The Undertaker. And, Mag, you're desperately trying to keep all the. The, the, the cats from herding in different I, directions? I don't think or... we should be wandering off. All right. Um, so unless, do, do either of you turn back or are you both uh, determined in your in your progress? I mean, I'll tell people where I'm going and wow. I'll, I'm very, I think I'm very easily persuaded at this point as well. Sure. I've said my piece, but I'm like, I'm standing around like, all right. Griff, I think uh, you strike me as a man with a strong sense of smell. Can you help us pinpoint where this rosemary is coming from? Ain't a dog, Marshall. It could have pulled me. Well, you do have a dog, don't you? <laughs> don't I, you? I do have a dog whose name is Dog. Following along, um, Dog is still at your ankles, just happily uh, lingering. But neither of you look in a particularly good state to try and isolate the uh, the source of this scent. More specifically, um, Marshall, this doesn't. This seems to be everywhere. It's pervading. It's all around you. You don't think that you'd be able to isolate the source of it by like, going around and smelling. Well, I don't like that. Uh, so, I guess. Are we going to have a look around or something? Because well, I'm frightful I've, fond of what little intelligence I have. I'd rather I mean, keep it. There's a doctor's office. I think that's a good place to start if it's some kind of, you know, anything biological or, or you know, yeah, making well, folks scream in your head. I think we should just find the source of whatever this is. I think we should find what's his name? Hank had already. That's the reason we came here. Once we get him, we can leave. I don't think anyone's going to remember if they saw him or who he is until we work out why the brains are getting scrambled. Well, I suppose the doctor's a good place to start, is any? Okay, brilliant. So your direction now decided, the collection of you turn, you start to head towards the, uh, the, the doctor's office. Now, uh, Blanca, you've had a relatively tough life. You've lived through some, some dark stages and you, you as, a, as, a, as a, sorry, no, as a traveler, you've had to do some questionable things. Now, the smell of this rosemary, which is for, for remembrance, uh, is actually doing quite the opposite. And it seems to be easing a couple of those memories. And you start to realize in the back of your mind that wouldn't it be nice to let it in and just forget everything a little? If you would like, you can pull down your mask and a couple of your worst memories will fade away and you might even restore some sanity. What do you think? Hmm. I've been thinking that she's impulsive yeah but <laughs> she is also uh has a strong sense of self-preservation come join the come join the high club it's a lot of fun i promise but look she's in a lot of pain and i think that's kind of what she's focusing on so yeah. maybe it wouldn't hurt just for a little bit just to if it's going to take some of the edge off all right there is that sense that maybe just Pulling the mask down a little bit will 
stop the pain a little and then she can focus. This thing's so uncomfortable anyway. You pull it down a little bit and and after a couple of deep breaths, you start to feel just a little bit better. You can restore a point of sanity and uh, the consequences for pulling down the mask will come back to bite you later. Oops. All right. Now, the collection of you head towards the doctor's office and you enter into it itself. It's not locked. And as you walk in, Joseph, you can't help but admire this place. It seems relatively well set up. You know that being a doctor on the frontier is quite a difficult task, but this looks like it has a clean surgery room. There's equipment laid out. And as you gaze up towards one of the uh, the, the walls, you spot a couple of degrees and uh, notes of recommendation coming from relatively prestigious uh, medical colleges. I mean, not as prestigious as the one you attended. You attended one of the best colleges in the world uh but uh you know this person seems to have done relatively well for themselves now as you are standing um all in the middle of the doctor's office without really hearing anything you suddenly all hear a gunshot coming from the room next to you the surgery room a very loud bang which echoes out and then silence i run for the door all right, you sprint for the, the door of the building or the door to the surgery room door to the surgery where i heard the gunshot from go 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 okay you Rear, charge forward, you burst in, you tear open the door, and you see um, a doctor uh, standing over um, what looks to be a pig uh, laid out on an operating table um, and putting down a smoking gun. The pig has just been shot and appears to be dead. Um, as uh, the doctor kind of looks, he looks towards you and starts and says, "Hey, hey, so, sorry, I, I didn't, I didn't hear anyone come in. I was, I, I, I'll be right out." You ain't uh, shooting at anyone, is you? It was just the pig. It was just the pig. It was just the pig. Hey, it's okay. on me, that scared the devil out of me. I'm going to go make sure the marshal don't arrest you. Hang on. <laughs> okay. I'll you spit around. Mac, what, what, what kind of expression do you have going? Uh, the usual. Okay. Impassive. Disappointed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think my rifle is conveniently dropped off my shoulder. Okay. I'm swinging by my hand. All right. Brilliant. Uh, it takes about a minute before the uh, doctor comes out and you notice somewhat admirably, uh, Joseph, that it appears that uh, he's gone through some kind of cleaning routine, um, made himself, um, you know, sanitized wow. before coming out. He walks out rubbing his hands together and you can smell the scent of alcohol um, on them. And he, he, he nods as he, as he comes through and says, um, uh, uh, hello, e e each of you. Um, uh, how, how, how can I help? How can I help? Uh, does he look like he's all there or does it look like he's out of it you make a psychology check Thank you. swapping between tabs sorry uh, hard That's success bad. hard success fantastic all right if grace is about a one you know he's uh fucking relatively i'm sorry if Gra <laughs> actually this is gonna be too complicated uh -oh. <laughs> grace is a one <laughs> And the man behind the counter was a 10. Jason was a 10 um, in terms of just being completely out of it. The doctor looks to be about a five. He's not quite all there, but there's still a, a glimpse of, you know, some determination. And you see him tracking and noticing a few things. He looks towards your your, your bandanas and seems to notice that you've been wearing the face mask and nods a little bit to himself and says, are, are, you, are, you, are you injured? Are you, are you here for treatment? Uh no, I, I'm, uh, well, I, I'm Dr. Waits. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. Uh, who, oh, who oh, pleasure a, a pleasure. It's always uh, wonderful to meet a, a fellow practitioner. Are, are these also doctors? They don't look like doctors. They're not. Uh, but they are fine people who uh, are, um, well, I, I, I ride with them. And uh, we're looking for a Marshall. I'm sorry, I don't remember the man's name. Um, Hank Hanratty. We're looking for Hank Hanratty, and we also know that there's a strange kind of smell in town, and well, yes. I thought you might know yes. something about that. I, too, have noticed the smell. I, I, I think it may be some kind of um, some kind of illness. I have been conducting experiments to, to uh, uncover the source, but um, Hank Hanratty, uh, I, I believe... I, I, I believe I, 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 I saw the man treated him for a broken limb some time ago. He, he, he works in the in the hills, he's prospecting or mining or some such. Uh, I, I wouldn't know where to send you, but he's here. Right. You said uh, you've been conducting experiments. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Oh, oh, yes. Um, 
And also, I'm I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. <laughs> oh, uh, that's no problem. I I am um I'm not, sorry. I've had a I've had a slight uh, lapse of concentration. I I, I, I recommend you uh, get some kind of material and cover your face. Oh uh, yeah, yes, that seems like a a good idea. Um. Uh, of, of course, he walks forward. Now, um, at seeing the sight of someone literally forget their name, since you were the closest here, uh, Joseph, and this is someone who is akin to you in, in, in doctorhood, uh, I will need you to make a sanity check. Um, this doesn't kind of... fall under my, like, I'm good at not getting wigged out by a patient. Doctor. Yeah, actually, okay, let's, let's, let's have it fall under that. That makes sense to me. Okay, so, so the, the doctor goes back and, and, and pulls it, uh, brings, up, brings some kind of um, cloth uh, over, over his face and, and comes back eventually and says, experiments, yeah, I, I, can, I can talk you, uh, you, you through it all. Um, you know who will know? You'll, you'll want to talk to uh, Molly McNeil. Uh, she's an entertainer. W works at the the the, the Buena Suerte Cantina. Speak to her. She'll uh, she knows everyone in town. Right. Okay. Uh, I will. Um. But uh, before we go, I'd really like to hear more about these experiments you've been running on the the smell and what's going on. I, I'm fascinated. Oh, certainly. Um. Well, uh, 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 come through. I'll show you, and, uh, and uh, the the rest of you can can can, um, can can come on through as well if you would like. All right, who's going into the room towards the experiment chamber? I'd like to know what's happening. Hell no! Okay. I am not curious about this. Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm good. Not on All right, life. so the three of you um, stay outside looking around the room a little bit um and Wait, who else sorry who's staying outside uh, uh Bla blanca griff and greece so the three okay. of you stay outside you know looking around the room a little bit and we'll come back to exactly what happens with the two of you in a moment um but the two of you step inside and you walk towards the dead pig um and um uh, you can see that there's another couple of tables uh, set off to the side, and the doctor uh, walks towards them and pulls cloths off cadavers that seem to be lying on them. And you realize that one looks to be a collection of bones, and the other one looks to be a, a, a dead body in a state of relatively advanced decay, probably several days old. And he pulls mm. them back and kind of says, Okay, um, uh, uh, my experiments were uh, I had to kill the pig to see because it didn't make sense that only one of them would. You know, you, you understand? Did you write your findings down in a notebook or anything like that? Oh, oh yeah, I, I keep uh, meticulous notes actually. And he walks towards the back um, and he pulls out a, a, a large uh, sort of um, uh, bound book, uh, which he puts down. Of course, uh, I, I keep some habits from uh, uh, my, my, my days at, uh, uh, in, in a medical facility. The only way to keep sane. As he opens them, you realize that uh, in an exercise of utter futility, this book is written in Latin. Uh, I speak a bit of Latin. You do speak a bit of Latin. All right. A huge this amount, but uh, like I that's okay. Things. You can start to puzzle this out. Right. Can you make for me an intelligence check? Sure. Um, I also have that talent, like sp like smart or quick witted or something. I don't know if this applies. Smart. This I don't uh sharp witted um able to collate facts quickly gain a bonus die when making intelligence but not idea rolls this is oh, an intelligence yeah, but not yeah. an idea roll please <laughs> this is exactly the circumstances this is exactly which that the circumstances that are ideal i'm for like you. doing brain shit all right let's do my bonus hopefully that well i got a success let's see if i can make it better all right better, 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 better. Uh, so, joseph you begin to read through these now this is going to take you a couple of minutes meanwhile um uh, the the yeah, uh, forty six, which is not a hard success, but it's better than a fifty six. <laughs> that's fine. No, you're you're all good. You're tearing away. Um, uh, meanwhile, uh, staring directly into your eyes uh, has come the sort of uh, faded gaze of um, the doctor as he nods at you. So, uh, Hank Hank Hanaratty, you were saying? Uh, if I'm if he's giving me his notebook, oh, he's yeah. addressing that question to Mac. Yeah, he's he's addressing this to Mac. He, he's talking to Mac. You are reading the notebook, so he's okay. he's talking to you, Mac. Hank Hanaratty, you were saying. 
Yeah, we're trying to track him down. Oh, what, what's he gone and done? Uh, it's between him and the courts, unfortunately. Oh, well, uh, listen, now it might, might be between him and the courts, but I'm going to find out if uh, y'all go up there and end up getting shot by the man. Well, that's a distinct possibility. I'll give you two to one odds that you drag him or he drags you down here for me to treat. Yeah, that's that tends to be how it ends up with murderers. I've seen it before. I've seen it before. Uh, he kind of leans back and smiles to himself. Um, outside, the three of you, are you doing anything or just sort of standing idly watching? Hey, um, we we know where he is now, right? Um, uh, you, you, well, you, you don't know where, where, um, where Hank Hanaretti is, but you know where someone who knows where Hank Hanaretti is, is, you know, that at the Buena Suerte Cantina, uh, there is a woman named Molly McNeil who knows everybody in town and will be able to tell you where. Oh, Hank okay. So we, we know he's up in the hills. We just yes. don't know where about in them hills. Yeah. So you might be able to do some tracking. That would be yeah. a lot of expertise. Uh-huh. I, All right. I elbow Blanca. And I go, what, Griff? No, we can't go to the cantina. <laughs> why, why not? Why can't we go to the cantina? We, got, we can go to the cantina. No, Griff, it. come back. Don't go out those doors. I elbow Blanca again. I don't, what are you saying, boy? Why are you saying these words? No, Griff, I will not follow you where the marshal has said we shall not tread. I'm going to the canteen. I don't care what you boys are doing. <laughs> like, we better follow Griff. If he gets out there in trouble, the marshal will have our ass. I'm not going to listen to a little kid. He I'm can't not afraid much. of the marshal. Yeah, well, I sure the, the hell marshal? am. What's... Oh. Um, All right. The three. Hey, of you... Griff, wait up. <laughs> I stick my head in the door where the marshal, and I go, hey, Griff, <laughs> Griff's running. I'm going to go follow him. And then I run before the back can tell me anything. Okay. The three of you now tearing out towards the cantina, led by Griff, who's sort of grumbling and storming um, across the town. Um, you know, the, 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 the three of you hardly need the uh, rosemary to be daft. <laughs> um, uh, but um, uh, the, the collection of you continue on. Yeah, uh, in this is- circumstance, I have the excuse. <laughs> <laughs> um, and as uh, you walk, everything starts to shake again just a little bit. You stumble, you catch your balance. Inside Mac, you hold onto a table. You're getting slightly used to this. Mm-hmm. But Joseph, this rumbling seems to punctuate uh, a terrible realization because as you flip through these books of experiments, uh, you realize that the doctor has been writing and has decided to kill a pig to see if, like the others, it will rise from the dead. Right. What? And let's what? take a short break right there. <laughs> we'll be back uh, in what? 10 minutes uh, very happily, and we'll, ha- we'll show you what comes next in Shadows Over Stillwater. Thanks for joining us. See you again soon. Oh, man. Hello, we are back. It is the stream of chaos. Minus uh, one, we have had a slight uh, m- uh, momentary lapse of the play, but never fear. We will be bringing you all the same joy as Blanco, upon arriving in the cantina, immediately goes off <laughs> to get themselves a drink and <laughs> scout out uh, the local area. Maybe Wait. they see somebody they recognize. Who knows? But let's get back to that in a second. We left you all on a little bit of a cliffhanger. Yeah. Joseph was standing to one side, looking down and carefully reading through a selection of doctor's notes when all of a sudden they read the words, I need to kill the pig to make sure it doesn't come back from the dead like all the others. Joseph, what do you do upon realizing this? Um, Joseph is fascinated by anything medically unusual and in his mind and like if he's reading latin he would be like full on medical mode so he's probably just like what does this mean and is going to either continue reading if there's more to read or if there isn't is essentially going to turn around and be like what do you mean they're coming back from the dead okay like just you turn around to the doctor and be like uh what 
Okay, so in the middle of the silence, the, the, the shake happens, Mag, you sort of straighten yourself out, and all of a sudden, Joseph turns around and says, what do you mean they're coming back from the dead? We'll pick up this conversation. Give me one second. We have to do a... I can consult his notes. I apologize. No, he's a, he's a, just a from loud a sound bathtub. coming in the background. <laughs> <laughs> now... Pastor who's just subscribed at T1. Oh, <laughs> on a, streak, a three month streak, six months overall. How's about that? <laughs> Thank you so much. We uh, appreciate it. It really does. Good work. on him. Good stuff. All right. So, uh, it's Joseph, you spin around and you say, What do you mean coming back from the dead? Um, uh, the doctor looks towards you and said, Oh, oh th th that's right. Uh, th th yeah, yeah. The, the, those two, they, they, they came back. They came back, rose right up and we caught him walking about and points towards the two dead bodies uh, sitting on the medical table that were only moments ago covered by a sheet. I, I, I swear it, walking around as if the day when you and they, <laughs> well, they weren't stinking to the grave. Right. Um, did they, like, did they come up in this state or were they fresh? Did they attack anyone? What, what was their state? Is they wandering around? Did they look like they were going? I'm just going to pepper him with questions. Okay. So these are all relatively coherent questions. How is Joseph feeling after receiving this news? Does this shock you? Does this send you in a spin? Or are you kind of compartmentalizing him? So in our session zero, yeah, we had some shambling people and Joseph's not stupid and has probably put a couple of things together. Okay. I don't think he believes that these people have come back from the dead at this point. He believes that maybe they were recently buried and weren't dead and like sure. were just dead drunk. And yep. the, the, the doctor who is, you know, not a bad doctor may not have realized. Right. Okay. Individuals were dead drunk not dead dead so for the time being i think he's like compartmentalizing but also like rationalizing what's going on um because he's a doctor you know like there there's weirder things that have happened I, i've seen you know i've seen straight back up when they shouldn't have and you know it's like rig mortis and weird things like that great perfect so you're it's... struggling to put the pieces all together have, have um, you said any of that yet nope Oh, so I'm peppering with questions because I'm just, with the exception of saying like, why do you mean they come back from the dead and the questions? I haven't said anything about the, the shambling or, any, or my assumptions. Now the doctor looks a little bit confused and he's having trouble keeping up. Can you make up a, uh, a charm check for me to try and put, <laughs> oh. <laughs> put the doctor at ease? I make said him, socially him. awkward for yeah. a reason. I ain't, I got it. You can see what my charm is. Oh, hard success okay what? fantastic well, with that, so the doctor looks and really really starts to concentrate uh he he flirts briefly with an idea which he would have pursued along with had you not succeeded the charm and he looks towards mac for a second and says i could just show no that no 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 that that won't work and puts the gun back down uh but then kind of rubs at his temples for a little while manages to say the ones outside the town in the cemeteries all, all about not well they're, they're coming out of the ground something fierce and and i've been hearing noises from the undertaker's uh place across the way thumping you know that sort of thing right. and i think that this disease whatever's going around in the air is bringing back the dead that's my theory. I think. Right. Who are you again? Uh, keep that uh, mask on if you don't mind and try not to inhale. Well, try and inhale through the mask. I think it'll help. I'm well, not gosh, sure. Gosh, I need to inhale if I don't want to asphyxiate myself. No, inhale through the... Don't, keep the mask on is what I'm saying. There's too many instructions. Ah, I'm tired. He kind of sits down grumpily on the table with the dead pig on it and blood coming out of the pig's head, still bleeding, starts to wet the seat of his pants as he sits kind of grumpily. Would you mind awful much if I took a look at the, the two uh, corpses that you have here? Oh, sure, yeah, do, do whatever you'd like. All right, I, I'd like to go over and uh, examine them and see if I can find any unusual anything I, Absolutely. I am not a doctor 
Joseph is looking for specific things. Perfect. So you head over. Uh, meanwhile, Mac, what are you, what's your reaction to all of this? Are you standing stoically watching? What's going through your head? Um, I guess I'd just uh, follow Joseph and stand behind him. Do you believe and, this? Do you believe in the dead coming back? Is this... Well, uh, you're the doctor. Here's, here's my work in theory. It was that girl back in El Paso saying the same thing about dead coming back to life. And oh, obviously whatever smell is lingering over this town is messing with people's brains. We're looking at some kind of mass hallucination scenario here, ain't we? I, I don't know about mass hallucinations, but I, I agree. There's definitely something odd. The, the young lady we found, she was hollering about people coming back from the dead. And well, there was that fella you you saw when you keep watch the other night um shambling around and then we saw another one and yeah most most well, folks are taken to shambling it seems once they get a whiff of this stuff it seems like the wind carried a bit further afield than expected hmm. caught some uh, stragglers out in the wastes caught a young woman yeah well we need to find out who's doing this to these people um I mean, I, I, I'd like to take a look at these bodies, but I think the next step after that is absolutely going to be checking out this Undertaker. You know, if, uh, if there's dead, then he's going to know about him. Okay. So you're checking out the bodies. Make a medicine check for me. In the meantime, the two of you, Griff and Grease, you have arrived with Blanca inside uh, the Buena Suerte Cantina. And as you walk in, uh, the first thing that you notice is to do a hit in the face by a wall of smoke. Cigar smoke, cigarette smoke, pipe smoke. Everybody in here is smoking up a storm and there is a fireplace in the corner and everyone is drinking and the smoke cuts over the smell of the rosemary and it is so thick in the air that you can't smell Hooray it anymore. Hooray for cigarettes. Do I, do I, like, I, so I'm in my haze. Do I immediately snap out of it or is it still affecting me but it just won't get worse? After only a couple of seconds in the smoke, you can add five back to each of your skills. Right? So it is five. coming back. <laughs> I'm you're back like, to being you, smart. <laughs> you're still, you're still, because you lost 15. You're still, <laughs> but, but, Ah, oh, oh, yeah, the, the tobacco kick is in the is 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 in your your head, and you feel tense. And no, no, this is this is, you, you you weren't thinking straight. Something was up. Now, unfortunately, that me uh, that means that you have walked into a real nasty cantina, and everybody in there still seems to be in full possession of their senses. Blanca makes her way to the side. She seems to have caught someone's eye and moves over for a conversation. Suddenly the two of you are left alone. This is a rough looking crowd. People are sitting, leaning against uh, the walls on the back on their chairs, hair hats pulled down with their boots up on tables, or they're sitting over gambling. Guns are in full view. One uh, set of folks are playing five finger fillet in the background, stabbing down with a knife and tossing money uh, into the middle of a table. There is only one bar staff member that you can see um uh, apart, sorry there are two stuff you can see one is this enormous uh, mexican fellow with uh, uh with arms the size of pythons all coiled around who's sitting there uh, mopping up a glass and it looks like you could crush it with his bare hands into powder cool. also in the corner you can see a young red-headed woman who appears to be playing on a piano and is doing significantly better uh, than the woman in the Sweetwater saloon uh griff uh sorry i'm griff you're griff yeah all right, Grease, uh, we got to fit in around here. And I, I, I know just the thing. We, we got to get ourselves some drinks. Griff, how are we going to fit in here? These people are low lives. Hold on. we I got this. I walk right. up to the bartender and I go, I follow. Yep. Barkeep, I, I need two drinks. Two uh, of your finest milks, please. Low fat if you have it. <laughs> I'll take half and half. <laughs> and almond milk. <laughs> we don't want to put okay. you out. Um, the Refrigerated the if you barkeep's got eyebrow raises. Make an intimidate check. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh, I feel like my intimidate score matches the intimidating nature of this situation <laughs> in which it is not that good. Nice. Well, actually nice. Hey, nice. Ah, <laughs> uh, no, uh, that is a that is a failure, a miserable failure. Okay, so um, as the two of you kind of um, stare for a couple more a sec a seconds at the uh, bartender, the bartender looks and milk. 
Yep. Go to the general store. We serve liquor. You want liquor? We'll, 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 we'll take liquor. Uh, Pay right. the man. Uh, yeah. Um, how much is how much is two liquors? <laughs> how much you got? Uh, I look at my. Uh, I have a spending limit of two dollars. I'm gonna say two dollars. Hang on. Right. I'll tell you what. How about I flip you for it? Flip me? Yeah. You give us them liquors for nothing, and uh, if if I win. And if I lose, uh, I'll hop over the bar and I'll clean that stench you got on the floor. And we'll pay you. He looks down towards the floor, says, clean my floors? Yeah. Boy, I never cleaned these floors. They ain't be cleaned in years. And you ain't going to go ruin the stench I got set up. I'll tell you what, flip me for them and I'll take your pistol if you lose. I don't want <laughs> I uh, Fine. Only here's the thing. My pistol's a fair sight more valuable than your liquors. So, y'all also give me an introduction to a certain Molly McNeil. Oh. Actually, do we have that information or was that only given to the doctor? Uh, we don't, do we? You yeah, could, we had it. We, I, we got for, that. For the sake of, for the sake of uh, progressing here, we're going to say that you overheard the conversation. It was oh. enough. You were sort of, Joseph, you were kind of going loud and, and, and brashly and stuff like that. And then so I think that it, it's fairly safe that the two of you could have heard. You say Molly McNeil. Um, he goes, an introduction to Molly? <laughs> sure Yay. thing. Make a, uh, yeah, so I did, did a, need to not do this in the accent. Make a gambling check. Mm -hmm. And uh, Griff, make a psychology check. My gambling is cool. not that great. If he gets my gun, I'm going to kill him. Why did you ask him to gamble if you can't play? I thought that was your whole strategy. Yeah, like you had I, a really high gambling also, score. Also, he's I mean, it's gambling. 40. That's pretty good. Yeah, my psychology is not that good. <laughs> it is 10. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> Damn you it. Made All right, that is two for two. <laughs> All right, <laughs> brilliant. So like, here's the swinging deal. Swinging and a miss. <laughs> um, you're, you're ready to gamble. You're, 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 you're ready to, you're ready to, Flip for this, uh, and you, you you're ready to flip a coin. Luck, essentially. Luck, now luck, I'm I'm luck. used to uh I, my 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 brain, the Australian brain, merely goes to two up for this, but uh may, maybe maybe Greece's does too. But in reality, um, uh the the um the man uh, pulls out from behind uh, the counter a set of knuckle bones, some kind of game that you are not familiar with. Upon seeing this, I'm going to give you two options. You can push this roll. And if you fail, you will lose your pistol. Or otherwise, you can say, "Oh, actually, I'm not going to win back out and probably get kicked out of the bar because he doesn't like doesn't like people saying no." Or you can luck at twelve points. Grace, Grace, yeah. double or nothing. Yeah, I we'll also out, I pull out my rifle. Of, <laughs> damn it, Griff! No, no, <laughs> don't do that. Double or nothing. Double or nothing. Roll them again. I like how 40 in this is, I would be better actually just flipping a coin. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, push it, roll again. Yeah, uh, uh, the, the man behind the bar is chewing at his lip. He's looking very happy with this deal. I'm gonna be back for this, uh, sorry, out of character. I'm gonna be back for this gun. He's not fucking keeping it, but. Oh yeah, he ain't keeping my gun either, right. but I, I got a little swept up in the emotion of it. I ain't gambled in a very long time. Yeah. I get it. Yeah, we are not great at this. All right, here I go. And you All cannot right. luck a pushed roll, is that right, James? Cannot luck yeah. a pushed roll. So if you want to luck it now. Can I tempt uh, I you to change your roll? No. <laughs> What's well, 40%? Yo! Oh, good oh, God! Oh. <laughs> we are the best. I love gambling. <laughs> and, uh, and turn around. Yeah. Turn around like, I'm like, I'm like, we turn to each other. We're like, we are the best. <laughs> <laughs> All right, enough of that. Like okay, y'all, okay, y'all win this. Oh. Sorry, what, what, what were you, what were you saying? Huh? Jackson just acted like I imagine Matt would have in the same situation. <laughs> like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Double or nothing. So we, we managed to nothing. bet. We are unstoppable kids. Our rifle and pistol have a combined value of somewhere in the tens of dollars. We have secured two shots of whiskey and an introduction that would have probably cost us nothing. Yeah. And also, <laughs> I don't like whiskey. I don't drink whiskey. Double or nothing. It'd be at least four shots of oh, whiskey. Oh, man. Now we're just getting yeah, shit faced as right. well. You're right. It's double or nothing. It's four, we get four shots of whiskey. I don't yeah, like whiskey. Deal. 
Yeah, neither do I. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have to drink it? Okay. I mean, um, so, oh. uh, the two of you uh, kind of stand, uh, are watching, and, and before your eyes, grudgingly, this man pours uh, two uh, fingers of whiskey into two glasses, slides them both over to you, and then says, come with me, takes you towards the side uh, of the bar where you can see Molly playing. We carry now, our little shot glasses. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ooh. Now, let's jump away for a second. Back inside, how did you go on your medical check? I got a success. You got a success? Yeah, okay, but, um, fantastic. Um, over 84. So tell me exactly what you're looking for here. What's going through your mind? What are you hoping to find? Um... I'm looking for unusual stresses on uh, tendons and, and ligatures to try, like denote that maybe they were moved like in rigor mortis or something to either prove or disprove the theory that these were undead when they were wandering around. Um, I'm also looking for um, just like any strange uh, intoxicants in their systems. Um, you know, I, I'm pretty good on the old pharmacy and and various things like that so i'm essentially doing an autopsy um i'm looking for what killed him and maybe what brought him back okay so as you start to look at um this this uh this uh, the, the the body and kind of really dig down into this you realize that a lot of your early assumptions are uh incorrect first of all there are no tendons on either of these bodies. The rotten one has maybe some remnants of muscle left, uh, but the, the bones, of course, you know, they're just bones. There's hardly any muscle left on this thing. And the other one is in such an advanced state of decay, there is no way that these things could have been living any time in the last, you know, for the, for the corpse months, for the bones years. Yeah. Um, also, a little more disturbingly, as you start to look at the feet, you know, there are scratches here. There's sign, there's there's fresh dirt on the knees. There are signs that you're starting to try to think of solutions. Uh, these bodies have maybe been dragged. Maybe there's been mud splashed on them, but your mind is stretching here. You're straining. You're trying to find some kind of reasoning. And unfortunately, you are going to have to roll a sanity check because despite everything, your medical expertise is screaming at you. These bodies were walking around. All right. You'll Man. Extreme success. Excellent. Monster. Okay. So you're 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 actually fine. You hold yourself together. You take a deep breath. You have a hypothesis. I can absolutely tell you why I'm fine. Please go ahead. Medical shit is like absolute it's it's almost like zone mm. of um fascination. Like this is just fascinating to Brilliant. me. Brilliant. It's, it's it's new science. Ah. Fabulous, fantastic, Mac. As you as you're watching on, you can see this almost uh, obsessed look come over Joseph's face. Is it concerning you at all? Yeah. Well, uh, what did you find? They're, they're dead, ain't they? Well, it's absolutely fascinating. I mean, there's there's no ligatures or tendons that would hold these ones up. They they look like they've been recently wandering around. I mean, the bones shouldn't even be able to move on their own anyway. And... Doctor, you can tell me whether they're dead or not. Well, I mean, they are undead, or they were, I think, which is kind of fascinating, don't you think? I think I've sent plenty of people to their graves and there ain't no stop on the way no, no i think you're missing the point they go to their grave and then they come back and i don't know what's causing it but i'm pretty sure it's got something to do with the smell and i'm pretty sure that's probably what that young lass was talking about and I, regardless this is this is fascinating stuff if there is like something that is bringing people back from the dead like some kind of organism or or something I, I i genuinely this could be like medical breakthroughs like we, we could find out so much about you know the human body and, and the kind of process it goes through all right doctor you tighten up your bandana for me we're gonna find the rest of the posse we're gonna ride out uh, uh all right although it, do i feel like i found everything keeper that I believe I've found everything or are there 
look, I mean, you could spend days researching these bodies if you were given them in, in detail. But look, um, in terms of what you can find with a quick examination, yes. I, I mean, I, I do think we should speak to the undertaker and I would like to spend some time looking at these. I mean, they are fascinating, but... I think it's poor for all of our health to stay in this stench a moment longer. We find the rest of the posse, we find out what they've found about Han or Addy, and we ride out. Right. Uh, yeah. And I'll... Perfect. You stop and take a, a sip from your flask, and the two of you turn, head outside. You, you saw Griff's, uh, Grease's head poke in. You know they're headed towards the cantina, and you stride across the ground and begin to head towards it. Now, remember, you do have rooms booked for the night in the Sweetwater Saloon, but you may not want to go back to there. As you I stroll... Say, I, I don't think they're booked. I think he took the reservation. I don't know if they were... He yeah, has, yeah, He yeah. has the faculty to hold the reservation. Yeah. receipt. <laughs> Absolutely, and, and as you as you walk, you know more people. You, you you actually, as you're walking past, you see uh, one young man looking about, uh, probably probably in his early twenties, has just sat down in the middle of the street, looking around. Doesn't really seem to know what is going on, and the two of you uh, go around and head back towards the cantina. Now, back in the cantina, smoke and haze filled everywhere. The two of you stroll through, um, carrying your drinks, uh, and um, the uh, man behind the bar, whose name you didn't catch, uh, head takes, takes you over into the corner where you can see Molly, a, a redheaded woman, playing um, on the piano. He gets over and says, Molly, uh, she turns and looks up and then he kind of says, uh, these two wanted an introduction. They've paid. And he turns around and walks off. Uh, Molly spins around in her chair and says, well, the two of you going to buy me a drink or? Uh... Ma'am, we have come prepared. These four are for you. <laughs> Pop them down on the, on the piano. Okay, she... Um, looks rather impressed and she takes one and, and, and sips it and says, uh, well, that's uh, mighty kind of you. Now, uh, what are your names? And now, Griff, you failed your psychology test here. Uh, Grease, I didn't give you one because you're a, you're a simple, naive uh, young, youngster. Uh, Griff, you start to s suddenly understand the uh, subtext of this situation um, as you are now placed into it. And you, you, you uh, realize that uh, you, you, you've come here for questions, but uh, uh, you, you, you've stumbled into something else. So you may want to redirect the pathway back towards questions uh, as quickly as possible. Well, my name is Grace. This here is Griff, and we've been on the road for a mighty long time. We were wondering if we could have a moment or two of your time. Do you have somewhere private we could speak? Uh, certainly. Why don't we head upstairs? It not need to be that private. Hey, Griff, come on now. We don't want to be, you know, alerting the whole town to our business. That's between the I mean, two of us and you, ma'am. I mean, I, I understand it does have just some level of pride, but not in, like, clo behind closed doors or anything like that. We, we just have a couple favors. I mean, not favors, but, like, things we need to ask of you or, or ask you. Oh, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> you stumble over your words, Griffin. Eventually, uh, uh, Molly seems to say, oh, calm down. What, you have questions. I'm happy to answer them. What what information do you need? Uh, I, I, I keep abreast of gossip, if, that was, if, that's, if that's what you're referring to. We we don't we don't need to abreast in anything here. Um, um, <clears throat> we, we just need to know a lo location of uh, a certain uh, someone. Uh, uh, Grace, why don't you take this one? <clears throat> I don't know what your problem is, Griff. Maybe you should have stayed on the road, ma'am. We're looking for a Hank Hanratty. We think he might be around here somewhere. I'm traveling with a marshal. We got a warrant for his arrest. She looks. She kind of um, laughs loudly when you say marshal, then leans in and says, "says uh, kid, you can't you." You can't say that word in here. And if your martial friend's coming, you want to head him off real quick. Uh, anyone wearing that badge liable to get shot coming into this place. Ma'am, if someone well, tries to draw a gun on the marshal or myself, they're going to find themselves a well bit more aerated than they were when they began the day. Oh, geez. She takes uh, another one of the whiskeys and knocks it back, puts it down. Uh, says, okay, look, Hank Hanaratty, yeah, yeah, he's here. You're, 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 if you're, if you're asking about him, you're asking about the wrong people. You're looking for Probish, Luke Probish. Uh, it's it's uh, Luke Probish married Hank Hanaratty's sister or something of the like. Right. So uh, who and, and where is he? Well, they've got a, a claim out uh, out east of the, the, the city, up in the hills. And she gives you relatively effective directions. Griff, you'll be fine to direct them. And it explains yeah. once again. So Probish, Luke Probish, married to Hank's sister. Hank works with them now. He don't right. work for no one. He's a damn barbarian. 
he's a monster. Ain't you had trouble with him, wrestling or shooting folk? Wrestling or shooting? No, he... In fact, he mostly stays in the Sweetwater Saloon. Doesn't come around here real often. Ma'am, would you be able to provide a description of the gentleman? Certainly. She describes Hank Hanaratty, and as best as you have heard the description, it seems to be accurate. Right. She kind of... Seeing your reaction, she says, Look, I'm not saying he doesn't look like he knows his way around a raffle or could be a bit of trouble, but he seems mighty occupied with what he's doing. He's, he's working up in the mines, and I see him coming into town with ore and trying his best to sell it though he doesn't have much luck around here more unless he's selling to other prospectors only can really get a price from Hiram or any of the other folks well I suppose the marshal or sought him out quick enough Griff you don't got any more say questions? that word kid oh I yeah sorry it. the uh gentleman I just leave, leave it at that yeah. and um uh, um, a couple of people are now starting to look over, and she says, I I'm sorry, I, I think y'all should uh, maybe come back tomorrow night, huh? All right. Yeah, kid, I, I think it's time we head out. Hey, well, one, one, more, one more quick question while you're finishing your drink and such. Have you been yeah. noticing anything strange going on around here? What, with earthquakes or people, you know, wandering away? Oh, yeah, things have been shaking, and, and damn near everybody in the town's gone kooky. I, 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 I reckon it's, <laughs> you notice something, it's all the church-going folk who, who have had it the worst. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 they ever since they they headed up a couple couple of nights back, uh, they they were having a midnight service or something, and um, we reckon that um, Lee let off some fireworks, and after that, things started to get a little strange. This would be an honest church. Uh, no honest church should have me, and they don't have me, so I guess so. That's a good line. All right. Well, consider my curiosity peaked. Okay, well, Thank all the best time, to man. you. She takes the last drink and says, see you around. Yeah. And the two of you um, stand and turn and um, conscious of the, the glances that you're getting from some of the other patrons head yeah. towards the door. And just as you sort of get at the, um, the, uh, the, 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 the get there, the bartender nodding at you, at you as you go past saying, come back if you want to lose some more money. I didn't um, lose shit. We didn't lose shit. We won that money. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. Get that up here. <laughs> Yeah. Um these Best things, of gambling. Um, <laughs> you step out and you see um Doc and uh the marshal approaching. Uh, Blanco waves to you from the side and says, I'll I'll meet you back in town. I need to I need to handle something. Uh, uh Marshal, you ain't uh, you ain't need to go in there, trust me, trust me, man. You, we uh, met the loveliest back. woman. She was there, very she wasn't that lovely. She were she was just just a woman, just like, we just met her, nothing else. I don't know what Griff's problem is. We we asked him about Hanratty. I think we got a lead on where to find him. We also may have something to say about what's happened to all these folks. Seems it's tied to the church and maybe some fireworks or something. Uh, well, that, that's awful interesting. Um, uh, Marshall? F fireworks in the church. Oh, they may have been left off, let off behind it or something. I don't know what they were celebrating, but... Part something. of some service or something. I don't know. All seems kooky to me. I've never seen fireworks involved in a in a service. Not one that I've been to. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. Um, oh, yeah. uh, tell them about how we won, how we got that information. Ah, uh, we gambled for it, Mac. You should have seen me go. I was rolling bones and spinning oh. guns. We, we, he was like, you're going to lose that. And we were like, double or nothing. Give us more whiskey. It was awesome. It, I'm good it, at it. it. Was, I'm real good it was at pretty it. pretty cool. Oh, Mac, it was pretty cool. You should have drink whiskey now. Uh, no, we, yeah, we gave it to the nice woman. Like, yeah, we, are they intoxicated? <laughs> oh, they, I mean, they, appear, nice they appear to, neither, you, you, neither of them appear to have been drinking. We're just <laughs> stupid. <laughs> Hooray. Right. Uh, uh, but yeah, we know good, We know where he is now, so if we can go get him. Like, let's, let's go. He certainly could, but uh, ain't no sense bringing him back here if the whole town is addle out of their brains oh you, you're right i got a solution to that we don't bring him back here we go get him we never come back to this damn town ever again we have taken them for all they got right grace we ain't got no reason to come back four whiskey shots i mean well hang on i'm i'm just i'm concerned i mean if these folks have been infected by something and if it's been happening for a while I mean, surely this is dangerous, or, or I mean, some someone mm. around here is liable to tumble in one of them potholes they're digging, and they're gonna turn to damn bones. 
Charlie, we gotta do uh, something about that. Not only that, I reckon this is where that girl visited. Where she became convinced that the dead are jumping out of their graves. Damn Seems yeah. to be a running theme. I Wait, suppose you rat. No, hang on, what? Dead? Yeah. The uh, doctor over, over yonder seems to reckon that people are climbing out of their graves and well he seems to have swayed a few others to that idea so the quicker we get rid of this smell and the, the people affected by it the sooner a bit of sanity comes back to the west people in there are smelling nothing but cigars and and such and they don't seem to be affected by it I mean, People Doc, wait, there. what do you reckon? I'd trust your word more than some random hodink. Go. I think that whatever's happening here has a logical explanation, and uh, I think if if what you say is true about, um, you know, smoke being good to get rid of this smell, then... Maybe I, I can do something about that, and I'll dig into my bag. Mm -hmm. Not really opening it very much. Yep. Um, and pull out some smelling salts, ah. and I'll put it on the masks that we're Excellent. wearing to like counteract. It's gonna smell yeah. fucking awful. Make a medicine check. <laughs> That's good thing. That's disgusting. Right. Right, Excellent, a success. Okay, so here's what's going to happen. You apply the you apply the the smelling salts to the mask. Now there's a few masks you have to deal with, so you have enough to keep this plan going for 24 hours, right? After that, you're going to need some other kind of new chemical or uh, some other solution. Oh, now, I've got carbolic acid if I need it. Oh, okay. uh, uh, I know. I was just, <laughs> it's um. It's what you use, uh, or at least what is commonly used in the current time period for um, antisepsis. You wash your hands in it and put bandage, like soak bandages in a solution of it because mm. it stays yeah. off germs, which I would know about because germ theory is a thing that was like six years around the time I was training. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't want any carbobic acid near my face in any way. Shit. It, then we got it. It'll tangle, but it, it'll be watered down enough. It ain't gonna do too much if, if we really need it. But I, I'd prefer to keep that for surgery if I have to. We've got 24 hours of this stuff before I need to yeah. crack in. All right, it. let's call sure. it a day. Now, I while this is move here, faster than not, none I don't of like you are the gonna be affected of... by the smell of the rosemary. And Griff, you can remove distracted. Uh, so Grease, you can remove distracted, and Griff, you can restore your statistics to normal. Back to their now original form. Back distracted. to their original now form. I'm, now I'm just regular stupid. <laughs> I'm just a doctor. Oh, I'm whoops. I, whatever. That's... Doctor's going to do some doctoring. Yeah. There we go. Fantastic. I can't do jack shit else. So what is your next destination? I don't I don't like much like the idea of the only folks with clear heads. So. Well... And I, eight souls. And I'd like. like to, I'd like to check out the church before we head out. I think if that's where it comes from, then as much as I think the uh, the undertaker, but if it started in the church, at least that's a place to go and tell us whether or not the undertaker is worthwhile. If we don't find anything, then I'm happy to head out. I suppose. No, I think we got to stay to fix this mess before one of the one of the rustlers in that saloon walk out and realize they're the only ones in control over here. Okay, perfect. So the collection of you turn about and start to head towards the church as quickly as you can. Moving through, you can see more and more people start to stand awkwardly about. They seem to be roaming. Really, no one seems to know what they're doing. Um, the uh, you, you see the blacksmith once again, the large uh, bearded uh, man, and he's sitting there and he's holding onto his hand. He seems to have burned himself on his forge or something. Oh, Not damn. too badly, but he's kind of going... <sighs> I'd like to test a theory, if yep. I may. I'd cool. like to go up to the blacksmith. I'm sure I'd have, like, I'll see if anyone else has some, like, cloth or something they can give me. If they don't, I'll take advantage. But I'm going to take the smelling salts and just hold it under his nose. Um, you walk towards him, and, and, and he nods at you approaching um, and says something to you in Spanish. Do you speak Spanish? No. No, okay. Uh, no. 
you're not really sure what he's saying. You go to hold out the smelling salts. Um, he kind of st- takes a step back. You'll need to make a charm or persuade check. Um, you can have a, di- a bonus die because he's so out of it that he's not really responding. I have no idea which one is. Oh, yep, persuade. <laughs> the whole five points high. <laughs> Take it where you can get it. Find out if bonus works. Yep. Uh, loading all the. Ooh, hello. You will all see my rolls before I do. <laughs> <laughs> right. Your first. I'll, I'll give you a hint. Your first roll were not that good. And your second roll was uh, much the same. The same. <laughs> Un- unfortunately, no. He kind of just sort of waves you off and 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 says something more in Spanish. Uh, you can't really get through to him. Maybe if you were able, when, if, do, do any of you speak any Spanish? Not a word. Okay. In which case, unfortunately, this man just doesn't seem to want to. That's all right. It was um. That that's fine. Uh, I just wanted to to see and. Sure. You Easy. said blacksmith last, so. Okay. Perfect. Um. So the you continue on um, uh, heading heading um, towards the church. You do pass by the laundry very briefly um, if you want to stop in or have any kind of look. But apart from that, uh, nothing. You do pass by the undertakers very briefly if you want to have a look. But otherwise, should we not nothing. just duck into the undertaker if it's on the way? What the hell is a laundry? <laughs> well, it's a place where clothes are clean and sometimes repaired it's oh, like a stream I, i'm sorry like like a river uh, yeah but- like a river except they take the river and put it in barrels and then put like soap in it and then they scrub things and right. it's it's hard work but you know someone's gotta do it and you know there, there's mighty fine folk keeping the world a cleaner place i'm in trouble off <laughs> He's like, yeah, just, all right. I so guess they fun. get some dudes in here. <laughs> Dude, Bunch of course, dandies. being slang for a, a, a fashionable Easterner. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, now you have not passed any dudes uh, so far. This town appears to be relatively um, out of the way. Um, yeah, you you could be considered a dude. You're, you're from Chicago, a dude. right? Yeah. Fantastic. I was trained in Maryland. Yeah. 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 I think I, you're all dudes. <laughs> I'm the other one that ain't a dude. dude. <laughs> a dude. We're all dudes. Okay. Um, and you pass by, you start to crest the hill that leads up to the church itself. You pass by the small schoolhouse. Um, uh, when you you, you you can see that there, there, there looks like there's some kind of um, uh, lesson that's being set up outside. And you can see um, the a, a, a couple, you assume school teachers, they're standing by and they're sort of staring at these sets of blocks and, and they're really trying to work out what the lesson is oh, and how to teach it. Shit. But they're not quite following what they used to teach and they're kind of I, I think you hear them muttering to themselves a little bit as you weave past and head up to the um church itself it's now a lot of restraint for me to not stop and do something yeah you, fair enough i mean you you're seeing you were seeing misery in this town these are people who are really struggling um and also medically fascinating oh absolutely, yeah, absolutely. that one's also oh. hilarious <laughs> I, li- I like that they're like, oh, you care about them? No, no, no. I I want to study them. <laughs> more, more. them both. Like, I care about the well yeah. but also... Like, you don't have to explain yourself to us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I wanted to leave them all behind, so I think you're fine, morality guys. A few um, more steps... Oh, sorry. Um, uh, a few more steps and you're back up at the church. Um, arriving uh, when you when, when you arrive and you look at it, it's quite it's a nice building it looks like a lot of effort's been put into it the base is stone there's quite high vaulted um, ceilings and inside you can see cleaned and well maintained pews um, uh, and uh, as you're looking inside you can see a man standing uh, at the the the, the pulpit um, of the church and he's preaching quietly uh, sorry no like not quietly but he's preaching his voice is quiet from where you're standing to an empty church. Hail. Uh, I, I ain't been in one of those for a long time. The two of you oh. are sort of stopped at the entrance way. Is anyone going to approach and get close? Any change in the smell? Is it any stronger yet? Make a spot hidden check. I like to smell hidden. How's that do for me? 
That's yeah, not, there is a change. In the smell. There is a change in the smell, and you are able to identify it is based on elevation. The higher you have gotten, the uh, the air has gotten cleaner. It seems that whatever particle is in the air is collecting down in still water, which is sort of at the base of these hills in a basin. Now that you're a little further up, uh, you feel a lot more comfortable. Mm. It's uh, coming from the ground. Yeah. Look, uh, as a uh, I ain't I ain't been in one of these for a long time, and I ain't got no plans to go back. So. Uh, if you if you lot is going in there, I'll I'll just stay. If it's all the same with you, I'll stay on the outside. It's not gonna burn you or something, is it? What? No. It's not just, gonna catch a light. I'm gonna I start just don't speaking like in the, tongues. Just, no, I just don't like the place. They give me the creeps. Well, all right. If you feel more comfortable out here, Griff, then absolutely you you should stay out here if that's what makes you comfortable. I'm gonna cut a lap, see if I can't find nothing interesting. Oh. Sure. All right. You start doing a lap around, uh, Griff. Uh, meanwhile, um, Greece, what are you gonna do? I was raised in a damn nunnery. I'll go in. Yep. Fantastic. Um, and the three of you walk towards the church and begin to step inside. Now, Griff, we'll come back to you in a second, but inside the church itself, as soon as you step in, you are just belted by noise. The echo, the acoustics and the echo in this building is fantastic. It's very well built. And you can hear the resonant voice of this preacher uh, ringing out. And he says, and I do see three more demons that walk towards me. I spy you treading across boots to the light from when you strike road through the lake of fire i see you coming my way how dare you befoul the halls of this place with your sin what are you doing here you, you spy a u.s deputy and his posse sir a no united states here. deputy the united states do you think the president has more authority than the lord above marshall well not exactly <laughs> Copus, does this fellow look? Um, make a psychology check. Just my whole job right now. Yeah. Meanwhile, Jeff. you say not exactly. You doubt. You you have no faith. You are caught in disbelief. I pray for you, Marshall. I truly do. I hope that one day you will be bent before the fountain of blood and have your face cast into it that you may be purged of your sins. Um, mad, whether it is mad because of the, the sickness or mad because of some other kind of madness, you're not sure. Um, um Marco, oh, sorry. I, I don't think we're going to get a, a lot from, can you take a look around? I, I don't mind trying to, I'm not good at distracting, but I can try. So you mutter something to Mac, uh, and uh, the preacher immediately leaps up and says, Whispering demons, whispering before my very eyes, but your secrets cannot hide from the Lord. Your lies and your sin will may be made as clear as our Lord was on Calvary's hill. What? <laughs> Is that a reference that we would know? Um, I, is your character particularly religious? Greece, you're relatively... Yeah, you I am, and this dude's check, freaking Greece? me the hell out. Fair enough. Make, make an education test, Greece. I, I don't know. Uh, Joseph, do you do you follow the church? Um, I am familiar with the church because, you know, I have to know what makes my patients comfortable, and if they mm -hmm. want someone who understands the church, then I, I know passing amounts about most religions at least to like calm people but i don't have a deep understanding of, of any of them. you are assuming that this that this preacher is leaning into some deep biblical law uh you know this is this is some this is some star trek fan kind of levels of uh, uh of uh, of uh, biblical dogma but uh you do not recognize the reference or what it appears to mean we only come here your, your reverence to find out um, what's happening in the town below that there, there seems to be a, a lot of people who, and I'm like kind of gesturing to, <laughs> to Mac, being like, there seems to be a lot, a lot of people who are 
came in for a sermon and now seem a little dazed and confused. And I, I, I'm a doctor. I, I want to help people in this town. If you could give me some information about what happened, and I'm yeah, <laughs> I'm doing my best to slip away unnoticed. Okay, so you're backing out. You're uh, you're are you slipping away to like have a look throughout the church? Or yeah, you're just trying to get out of the building. Uh, no, I'm looking for the evidence of these fireworks. Okay, cool. So make a stealth check, uh, you, Mac. Um, I'm going to ask for a persuade check from you, Joseph, and Greece. What are you doing? I'm dumbstruck. I do not like the declaration that I am of the devil or anything to the sort. And I see this person as very much an authority figure. So I'm listening and I'm taking note. All right. So you appear to have successfully had this um, had this preacher completely hone in on you, Joseph. Um, and Joseph, uh, the, the, the preacher starts to just just rant at you. This endless stream of vitriol. What is happening in the town? What is happening? Oh, hell is split open, and all the devils are here. Uh, the Garden of Gethsemane is overcome with a crimson tide. And he starts launching into this uh, long uh, stream of vitriol. I just want Meanwhile, to point out that the plan that relied on on Joseph's persuade and my stealth had a combined four percent chance of succeeding. Well done. <laughs> Which oh it seems gosh. to have. Easy. That is brilliant. But fortunately, you managed to sort of slip away and 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 you you literally edge around the pews and with an extreme success, before your eyes, um, the, 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 the preacher actually comes down and starts walking towards you, um, you know, jabbing his finger towards you, Joseph. But the atonement was limited and they do not understand this. As you step forward and you can make it back into the preacher's quarters. You could... This, this this place is yours. Now, Greece, you're standing yeah. there. You're beginning to get more and more worried. I think I'm going to ask you to make a sanity check. Yeah. Uh-uh. I ain't real happy. Okay. Just take a point of sanity damage as, as you, you start to hear. You know, you're, you're, you are getting flashbacks to the words of the nuns uh, more and more and more. If I notice this is happening at all, I, I don't mind if I don't. Um, sure. I'm like look down to Greece and be like, Greece, he ain't sound mine. I, I wouldn't be taking too much to heart what he said. Uh, like, again, depending on how close. If he's very close to me and would hear that, I probably wouldn't say it. So we can. You, you can whisper it. He he he's he's doing a lot of like spinning around and walking yeah. off and gesturing wildly. So you have plenty of time to to whisper. Um, yeah, Greece. If it's making you uncomfortable, you can you can go. I, I'll be fine. I don't think he's any real danger. And if he is, I'll holler. But I don't think you need to worry about what he's saying. He's not in his right mind right now. I, I've seen similar before. He's he's got a direct line. He knows what he's speaking about, and he's he's telling the truth. He's seeing those around us for what they are. And hell, he might be you know his mind maybe touched some, and it ain't all there. But there's something in it. He truly believes that, and he's seeing us for monsters. Greece, Greece, you ain't a monster. All right. Yeah. Well. You- I mean, maybe he knows what it is we've done recent and in the distant past. I don't like how he... Grease, Grease, listen to me. You ain't a monster. Nothing you've done recently. Well, I've known you, and um, I don't know your past, but you, <laughs> you're 17 years old. There ain't much you're going to be able to do in 17 years. It's real evil, trust me. And I, you're not evil, all right? You're not. If you got this in hand, I might... I might go for a wander. It just kick rocks if outside or something for a bit. Head outside and be in hollering distance, all right? I'll, yeah, I'll yeah. holler if anything happens. Yeah. I, I, I won't draw a gun in here, though. Just if something happens, aim to run. I'll do my best, although you might have to aim. Don't aim a gun in here, but maybe aim it through the door. It depends being. how far outside he gets. All right. I'm going to head out. You take a few steps out, and it takes you a couple of moments to calm down once you're outside Greece. This was, yeah, a little description of this uh, priest figure, just because I didn't go into massive detail. He's He's got slicked back hair really uh, pressed down against his head that goes all the way uh, back to the middle of his neck. Uh, he's also got uh, the most bulbous, beautiful double chins you can imagine. Um, and uh, set off to one side by the pulpit is a large uh, top hat, like one of those very very large enthusiastic hats which uh, you assume he would look just terrific in uh, (laughs) uh, preaching. Meanwhile 
Mac, you've headed through to the back and you start to look friendly through. This place looks relatively modest. You see, uh, you see the quarters of the um, preacher himself. You can see a small dining room. You can see some basic essential areas. Pardon me. Um, there's some quarters and the such. Um, what are you looking for in particular? Signs of the fireworks, right? Yeah, which was a bit of a weird description. So I'm looking for something fireworks related. Or okay. Make a spot hidden check for me. And you guys are all really well. Uh, Habakkuk okay. 54. Excellent. All right. Okay. So with a success, um, uh, you, you you start to wander through and you, very quickly, you, you are able to definitively determine that there is nothing suspicious going on in this church. You know, there's no hidden signs of fireworks. There's no hidden signs of anything mm -hmm. in particular. But what you do notice uh, is in the, in the distance, quite far away, you can see a set of hills that rise up and almost turn into kind of like large mountains or a large mesa uh, off in the distance. And as you look at it, something clicks in your mind. You remember saying earlier, the source of this sickness is coming from the ground. And as you look at that mesa and you can see the wind blowing dust across it, and you can see a cloud of dust drift through from the top, go through the sky and then slowly move to settle in still water. And you suddenly think to yourself, hang on, maybe it's not coming from the ground. Maybe it's coming from the air. Maybe it's coming from high up. It's settling in like a basin kind of thing. Exactly. Apart from that though, no sign of anything. Well, that was still productive. Yeah. Outside, Griff, you went for a stroll around. Now, you, you wanted to find something, but you didn't really know what you were looking for. Do you have a suggestion? Um, uh, I, I, well, I was planning to look for the fireworks as well. Sure. But um, that, that was all I really had. I, I was mostly looking for an excuse not to be inside. Uh, absolutely. Uh, do you want to make me a uh, navigate check? No... Can I argue for literally oh, anything cold. else? Um, <laughs> I uh, think that's good. Okay. This is this is there's something oh. there is something here that you'll only be able to tell. You're walking around and there is there is a chance that you kind of okay. make this connection. So have a navigate check. Nice. Oh, and with a hard success, you are kind of gazing along and uh, your eyes drift across the road and you realize that you're actually not that far from the probish mine. You are not so far from where you think Han Hank Hanaretti should be probably only about 20 minutes walk or something like that oof oof mm. nah yeah, you, nah I won't I won't I, I'm that, tempted yeah. Yeah. I, I, like, I like pull out my rifle I aim in the vague direction I go bah all right, lovely. I put my gun away. <laughs> Excellent. Swinging your gun back over your shoulder, you head back towards the front of the church, where you can see Greece uh, catching his breath outside. Um, inside the church, Mac, you reappear, and Joseph, you are finally uh, you finally realize that you have the um, opportunity to escape from this per uh, uh, from this person just as they step back. And now, the question, of course, is what exactly did Eve see? As you know, a new uh, tirade is launched upon. Um, do you have any? parting words before you back slowly out of the church no <laughs> goodbye okay. right um <laughs> the collection of you leave um and and uh he, the 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 man continues his preaching uh, and as you walk sort of notices you walking back and keeps mouthing something and as you get further away further away the sound fades but you hear again devil 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 we will see you cleansed and at last he turns and walks back towards the pulpit you're all gathered around now outside the church. What's next? Uh, <clears throat> well, you, what, you folks get anything useful from in there? Nothing suspicious. I got a thorough understanding of how the biblical text can be used to berate someone into believing. <laughs> That's I, all it is good for, ain't it? <laughs> I did spot something across the plains from the window. It seems to me that this smell is coming from elsewhere settling over the town from high up so right. i think we head up to the hills try to find hand ready and the source of the stench can i make a natural world check to determine the validity of this theory sure make a natural world check noise Boom, yeah, boom, yeah, this boom, boom. this makes tens after tens after, after tens. tens. Like, you're, you're nailing this. This makes 
absolute sense. And in fact, as you think of that, you're like, and you know, the, if the wind blew even further, it would come and you you almost, like you could track, the wind would have blown directly into the direction that you came from El Paso. So the sites that you saw earlier that were in line with this kind of thing, well, they all make sense too, assuming that this sickness has been blowing on the wind. Uh, and is it blowing from a specific location? Now, with a hard just... success, I'm afraid that's going to be too difficult for you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's yeah. blowing... There's wind based. You're looking at four points of luck for an extreme. Yeah, no. Nah. Um, <laughs> I don't like to luck down to extremes. It's feels it feels cheap. It feels I I use I save my lucks to get successes out of failures because that's when you need them. <laughs> when you when you're when you're uh yeah when you're ten points away from falling off a cliff, that's when you want to use your luck. <laughs> well, um, right. No good. Um, so if it's coming from outside the town, is it possible that it's coming from that ranch? The Probish, the Probish mine? No, yeah, the, the directions don't no, fit. Mine, sorry. No, okay. the directions don't fit. Mm. All right, well. The question, I suppose, becomes what's more important? Uh, you all know my opinion on it. That being, we should go after Probish and Hank Hattery. That's the reason we came here. Which is, I'd like to see Han ready in irons. Fact remains that this is a volatile situation. Once, once those, I have to look up like a list of good words for no good nicks in the West. <laughs> Ne'er do wells. Ne'er do wells is a good one. I got to say that. This is a volatile situation. Once those near 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 to near to snap that one doesn't work. Yeah, it's too many once, too many syllables. <laughs> once they realize what they're sitting on, which is a town full of idiots, no way to stop them. There's no telling what kind of havoc they can wreak or what lives might be lost. Another I don't thing like leaving consider. that behind. Another thing to consider, sorry to interrupt you, Mac, it's getting a little late. The sun is starting to set and uh, darkness is drifting across the landscape. You might want to start thinking about either heading towards the Probish Ranch and settling things real quick smart, or heading back to Stillwater and to the Sweetwater Tavern and starting to make some plans there. I don't want to sleep in this stench. I don't know what's going to do to us when we wake up. Well, I think we only got a few other options. Either we sleep with the masks on, we head out of town, or we stay in that, uh, that cantina. I think we mosey on. All right, you you want to go somewhere else? Sleep out on the range? I want to find where this tension's coming from. But we, we we ain't we ain't got no right idea. It's just away on the wind. We, we need more. We need more information. I reckon. Nah, nah. Maybe maybe that dare undertaker knows something more. I don't know. Maybe. Well, all right. I guess we go to campus a little longer. I just don't like staying here. In which case, the collection of you turn back to the town and begin to walk back in. The smell of rosemary is starting to burn at your nostrils again, uh, so you press your masks closer to your face. You're I'm running out of time ever so yeah. slightly. I yeah. would suggest that maybe, even though it's a rough part of town, Marshall, would you be willing to take your badge off and put it in this here medical bag and so we can get some rooms in a place don't smell like rosemary if it comes to that I, my main concern is keeping all y'all safe and if sleeping somewhere that smokes up the place so much we can't smell this I, I think that's our option if we don't want to stay there then I think our option is leave the town I don't think we can stay. All right. I'll stow my badge until we decide whether we need to stay there or not. So, you stow your badge away and begin to walk back down into the town. Your masks wrap tightly around your face. You head further and further as the sun sets below a lip of the hills in the horizon. And as you go through and darkness begins to slowly set around, dust giving way to blackness as you come totally into the town itself, all of a sudden, you hear a loud crack in the air 
as you went to the gates of the town, you look up and you see shining up in the sky far above you are the beautiful, brilliant displays of fireworks. Yeah. And outside the town, in the distance, all around, the many bodies buried in the hills start to shift. And inside the town, the people breathing in the smoke drifting down from the subs, the fireworks begin to lose their minds. Let's leave the scenario there and come <laughs> back to it next not. week. Thank you very much for joining us, everybody. It was great to have you here for the first session. And thank you to all the cast for mm. jumping in on this lovely new campaign. Remember, this is uh, Shadows Over Stillwater. If you want to learn more about the scenario, you can jump onto chaosium.com and you can also hear about all of our other live games and uh, all kinds of stuff that we do there. Now, we'll be back next week, same time. That is 7.30 AET. And you can catch the bods of these games up on youtube in a couple of days have i forgotten to mention anything i think that's a lot of it all right well there in which go. case great to see you all thank you again and thank you to each and every one of the cast members we'll be back next week see you soon